Oh, and we're live. And let's not fuck it up like last time, shall we? Man, that uh, that Verotic, uh, that Verotic stuff did not work out. Really did not work out. I tried. Show was not. I I wasn't feeling the show. I couldn't do the show the way that I wanted to do the show. I it just it, it crashed and burned. It crashed and burned. Not everything can be uh, top notch successful so it is what it is and that's all that it is seems to be going around a lot uh i'm trying to find let me see if i have it here i'm looking for my notes for tonight's episode uh we are going to finally do oh here it is we're going to finally do the thing that i've been wanting to do for a very long time and i keep putting it off and we're finally going to do it okay it's going down so let me get rid of this because it's probably eating up memory that I need for my show. Let's see who that is. I'm just texting with a friend here, I'm talking about the misfits. So it is me. We having we're having problems with our with our Wi-Fi connection, which is really annoying. Um, if I sound like a robot, let me know. Uh, tonight, we're going to try and do something a little bit different. We're going to try and do viewer audience participation. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to post a link tonight in the, I don't know, somewhere in, in the comments maybe. And one by one, we're going to have, thank you. Peter noticed my, Peter noticed my Simpsons shirt. Yeah, five and below, man. Five bucks. I saw that. I was like, that is mine. Have to own that shirt. Um, but yeah, I figure we would uh we could finally do a thing where we all kind of hang out a little bit. Um, everybody's gonna whoever comes on can list. What's up, Rue? How are you? Good work, Rue. Rue did some good work in the uh the group the other day. We had some uh we had some stuff go down in, in Rue. Uh, just had the intuition to just handle shit. Did a phenomenal job. Thank you, Rue, for that. Rue Morg, as we call him. It's Rue Morg, like Russell Casualty. Um, but yeah, hold on, I'm trying to share the stream real quick. So so that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say, here's the deal. I'm going to say my 13 favorite tracks from each band. And then you all will take a turn. Not all well, I mean, look, you can either list it in the comments or we'll have you pop on. You could say a few comments. Um, if we get a big if we get a big crowd, and I don't know if we will, maybe there'll be nobody, maybe nobody will want to, maybe everybody will be too shy. That's a possibility too. But you know, if everybody's not too shy and everybody comes on and like, you know, does a thing, and then eventually have to like, you know, move people around to make room for new people. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never done this before. So we're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna try. We're gonna see what goes down. Um, a couple of update things. Um, again, 1979. It's coming. Swear to God, <laughs> don't kill me. Um, I have a show called Pizza Punk. Uh, I did my longest podcast ever with my friend Loki, who um, he's he's in some horror punk circles and whatnot. And he has a show called Talking Brash. We did a crossover episode. Massive crossover episode it was a four-hour conversation that loki and i we split it right down the middle uh loki is a is a great guy who um didn't mind me friggin talking for four hours because i just would not shut the fuck up uh and i'm gonna try and post the both parts right now in the chat uh maybe i shouldn't I'll just go seek those out on the channel go look for them on the youtube channel we're getting very close to a time where I may not do it live from Facebook anymore, depending on the situation. I We may only do this from YouTube. Uh, that's not to say that I won't share it onto Facebook, but I think we'll be, you know, hosting the stream from YouTube from now on. I'm not sure. It's, it's we, The time might be nigh. Um, nothing is certain. Loki and I talked about a ton of shit. Some of it, some of it may be rehashed. Um, from past episodes that you've seen here 
And if so, then skip it. But uh, it was, I thought it was a pretty good four hour conversation. Um, Tim, uh, uh, truck and Tim Ackerman might really enjoy that because Tim, Tim drives a truck and uh, he, he needs, he needs something to fill his long, what's going on van. Um, he needs something to fill his, his long truck drives. Uh, so I guess I'll just start. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I'm going to go through my list. I'm going to give a brief description for each one. I'm going to just do a, a brief explanation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in the comments. And whoever wants to hop on, maybe we could do two people at the same time or one person. I don't know how we're going to do this. Again, I've never done this before. Um, you'll hop on. You'll 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 say a, a couple couple things, and um, we'll we'll move on to the to the next thing. And if it goes really well, we can do this in the, again in the future. We can have specific questions, you know, as they relate to Mr. Sam Hain Danzig stuff. And we could have uh, audience participation where audience members come on and, you know, share their share their thoughts and experiences, whatever. Uh, we could do tour stories, maybe. That would be funny. Not tour stories, you know, uh, uh, band stories, uh, show concert stories, that sort of thing. Something that happened to you at a Danzig show. You know, that sort of thing, or a misfit show or a whatever show. Um, all right, so I'm gonna begin with mine. Ready? And I get I, I could show you the list, or I could just call them out. I guess I could just call them out. So all right, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so these are in no particular I'll say so a couple of things. One, these are in no particular order, okay? Um, that would have taken way too much freaking time to do them in a particular order. Number two. Uh, I couldn't do 10. I wanted to do 10, but it was just too hard. So I did uh, 13. 13 is the appropriate number I felt uh, for doing this. Um, and lastly, I think we're going to be recording on Sundays for a while. Um, Mondays have gotten a little too hectic. And lastly, if I sound like a robot, let me know. Okay, that's everything. Okay, so song number one. All right, so first let's start with the Misfits, obviously. Song number one. I wish I had a better countdown, a little better graphic. Imagine there's a, a graphic here and it just pops up. Song number one, Astro Zombies. Just right out of the gate. Whoa. I'm not, I'm not gonna sing each song. Um, Astro Zombies is song number one. I, I freaking love this song. For me, it's the quintessential misfit song. Um, if I'm gonna introduce the band, the misfits to someone, I'm probably gonna have them check out Astro Zombies. I think it has everything that you want to hear in a misfit song represented it's got some woes um it's hooky glenn's voice is is, is friggin awesome on it uh, you just can't go wrong with astro zombies number two night of the living dead uh this has been a a, a a favorite of mine for for many many years and here's the thing about these songs too is you know they change you know every once in a while i i you know it's not i love them all i love all the songs but it's just I love all these songs, it's, but it's just like, you know, there are some that I just pay more attention to than others. Um, and Night of the Living Dead is just one that's always been there. Uh, I just love, once again, you get your, whoa, whoa, it just builds up. And uh, Glenn is just sailing, man. He's sailing on the basic three chord, you know, punk rock structure. And he's sailing with his woes. He's, he's sailing down the woe sea with his woes so that's number th number two is night of the living dead which is about which is supposedly about bums about um bums being like zombies in times square some shit like that um song number three children in heat i don't know what this song does to me man it just it drives me wild when i hear children children in heat i just lose i lose my mind um, I don't know what it is that I feel like that band, that horror business band is just firing on all cylinders on that track. I know that I guess they recorded that live and it just sounds great. Joey's just bashing, bashing away the skins, man. Um, Joey's a very meat and potatoes drummer, man. He's probably the most meat and potatoes drummer they had, you know, um, I, well, maybe Googie is the most meat and potatoes drummer they had. Robo's like just sheer hardcore fury. And, you know, Jim is just, Jim's mag magnificent. There's he's in another class, and 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 Manny's pretty Manny's pretty solid from what I've heard from Manny too. But uh, Joey Image is something about him. He's just bam bam, just just hitting those skins, man. And um, I I don't know. The song is weird. What is it about? Children in Heat. You know, um, they all change their names to Chicago. They get 
venereal disease. And I just love the no resistance. I love the way I feel like Glenn gets lost in the madness of the song when he's singing it. Uh, it's just a great freaking song, uh, Children Heat. Up next, number four, We Bite. Um, we Bite is another one of those songs that just does it to me. Just gets me like a froth at the mouth with We Bite, you know. Um, strike Out on the Wolf's Endeavor. Carnivore, I Live for Pleasure. Um, when I Get This Blood, I Rip Your Throat. I Just Want to Rip Your Throat and Drink Some Blood. The lyrics are so simple. Um, it's just pure hardcore, man. It's pure hardcore. It's funny. We bite had, oh no, we bite does have robo on it, but it's from the 82. I think we bite was from when Googie, we bite is really done by the walk among us band. You know what I mean? So it's interesting that it's like a hardcore song right before they would really attempt, you know, to be hardcore. And, um, I just can't get enough of we bite. I love we bite. We bite is when I want my face to literally melt off. Uh, and an honorable mention, even though I'd said 13 songs by extension, uh, by extension of We Bite, uh, freaking motherfuck, um, uh, Wolf's Blood, man, just also just a, a furious song, um, just a furious song about some dark shit that none of us will ever understand. Um, number five, Earth AD, title track Earth AD. This is another song. That's just brutal and fast and just punches you right in the face. It just punches you right in the face. It charges at you. It's like the song. It's like you're preparing for war. And that's the song you listen to when you're rushing into battle. Like you're literally facing death and you're like riding on your mighty steed with your big ass sword. In your head. It's just like ding, 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 And then it just goes into that fury. Um, it's just brutal, man. And it's about the Hills of Eyes, supposedly, or some of that, something like that earth after doomsday. And, um, it just, it just, it, it gets me, man. And you know, what's interesting about earth AD, especially at that later period is earth, a earth AD has dynamics. The song like crashes. It has like a, it crashes into the wall and stops like the down, 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 the death's body, down, the death's body, and you. And then there's just like, there's almost like silence. You think the song is going to be over. And then Robo's like, oh no, the song's not over because he does a drum roll. Boom, 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 boom. It's like they're spinning up the top. Boom, 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 boom. Ah! And it just goes in again. And you're just, uh, it pumbles you. And when he does that song live, it's, it's just great, man. It is great. Earth AD. Uh, number six, Blood Feast. Um, this is a song. I just, I threw this in here just because I, I always love Blood Feast. I just think it's so brutal. Um, the the chorus, I love that. And the blood. Do, do, do. And the blood. Like what? Like he's just singing about a blood feast, man. Um, possessing your tongue, possessing your lips, possessing your eyes. This is supposed to be a Sam Hain song. We talked about that. By the way, that offer, that author offer off sorry so sorry that offer not author i was thinking Ar arthur and then i was thinking author and then i was thinking offer holy shit have you ever realized how close offer and arthur are They're very close together uh close that offer still stands uh the contest of of people if you have a band cover some fucking um Sam Hain songs like they're Earth AD or cover some Earth AD songs like they are Sam Hain songs. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, freaking Blood Feast just does it for me, uh, in that sort of way. It's brutal. I mean, pretty much anything off of Earth AD is brutal. Queen Wasp could have gone on here, but I picked Blood Feast. Like I said, what if, how many is it? 54 songs? All of them. I love all of those songs, man. I love every single one of them. However, I had to limit myself to 13. There's, there's something special about like when you're making a mix or something, like trying to make it like albums like, which is like 13 or 14 songs. All of a sudden, you got to be really picky with your choices. And I, I kind of did. I was supposed to do 10 and I made it 13. So I, I can't put Queen Wasp, just Blood Feast. Uh, number seven, last motherfucking caress. This was my first Misfit song ever. Um, I heard last caress along with two. I've heard last caress 
along with Ghoul's Night Out and Day of the Dead. And I was like, whoa, these songs are really different. Because like Day of the Dead sounds so weird. How is this the Misfits? But, you know, Last Caress is also the Misfits. Last Caress to me is probably the ultimate Misfits song. Even though Astro Zombies is the song that I would show someone, Last Caress is like, it's the song. It is the song. It is the... I guess it's the Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg bop of Misfit songs. And I think it has similar chords to, um, to Blitzkrieg bop. I don't know. I feel like you can, there's a mashup for someone who knows how to do mashups. I want to see the last caress Blitzkrieg bop mashup. It, it's there, man. It, it's friggin' there. I want to see that shit. Uh, and what can I say about it, man? It's the most, it's just fucking offensive. It's the song when you're, you're 14 years old and you're listening to last caress and you just want to piss off your fucking, you know, and offend people and be like, oh, I got something to say, you know, and you say the, those things, you know, uh, the baby and the mom. And it's just like, and then, you know, the stuff that he's writing about, we talked about this on a previous episode. You can go find it somewhere. He's talking about like, it's a, it's talking about like death itself, but he's talking about like a serial killer who's doing these things and worshiping death or, you know, how he's awaiting deaths. He's waiting for one last grasp from death as he does these really horrible things and they don't really matter. I don't know. Last caress, baby. It's, it's the shit. It is the shit. I, I love it. Um, and it just also, it's kind of got, um, it, his voice is, his voice is, is magical on, on last caress, man. It's magical, right? Like there's no, there's nothing. It, it's the perfect representation of Glenn Danzig's voice. I think more than any other song might be the single best. Maybe. I mean, you could say you and me, maybe, I don't know. Um, TV casualty is number eight. I love TV casualty. Really simple. A simple riff, like, -na 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 -na. like that's all that he's like, hey, hey, Frank, just go. There are pain smears on everything I own. The vapor rub is lying on a table of filth. Christmas cards to which I never replied. My eyeballs absorb only brew filtered light. A uh, wolf, Wolf J Flywheel. Um, I don't need to recap at the end because freaking this is going to be on YouTube and you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube if you want to. We just do this live for the audience participation and then everything goes over to YouTube anyway. So, um, yeah, Wolf, no worries. And Wolf, if you want to come on the show, we're going to do audience participation in a little bit. Um, I love those lyrics, man. That's that's Glenn doing that, that Bukowski stuff. And you know what could have gone on my list? I... I love theme for a jackal. I wanted to put theme for a jackal. I ultimately left it off because I just, I decided to go a different way with things. And, um, but, but TV casually just has some interesting lyrics. Babies in prison. They call it a womb. Nine months of sentence. No parole. Slivers of steel stuck in your lungs. Breathe deep. We need a donor for blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just such a, what a, yeah, Pete, Pete says it best, man. Um, TV casualty is so creative and unique. It is, man. It is. And it's just not, it's not really doing anything. It's almost kind of like, a, <laughs> I know this sounds really crazy. It's like a low rider song. Like if I was in a low rider, like if I was in the Southwest United States, I was in a low rider, I'd put on TV casualty and just bump it and just be like, there are pains me. <laughs> On everything I own. Uh, he's talking about like TV. Yeah. And uh yeah, yeah. Peter also says the 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 I love Lucy theme. You hear that in the in the end. Both those songs, Static Age, it was hard, you know. I didn't I wanted to put Static Age on there too. They the, those songs thematically are very similar, and it's like Glenn, it's Glenn doing abstract poetry uh set to music because like I said, the music is super simple. It's na -na 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 -na. it's almost like Glenn was like I really like this poem, but it's got to be a song. So, okay, let's just put some music underneath and I'll do my poem. So it's like almost like a, in a weird kind of way, it's almost like a spoken word poem set to music. TV casualty. Um, Yeah, Rue is right. There are just too many fucking great songs to choose, man. It's too fucking hard. It is. It's too hard. All right. Up next is number nine. <laughs> Halloween, baby. How can you not have Halloween 
on your playlist. Not you, me. How can I not include Halloween? I de- I wanted to leave Halloween off. I could not. Um, once again, those lyrics, candy apples and razor blades, little dead or soon in graves. Um, I remember on Halloween this day, anything goes, hold on. We're going to step back real quick. Cause Wolf is asking me a question that I can't resist. Um, do I think it's an anti TV message? Yeah, man, I do think it's an, an- I don't know if it's an anti TV message, but you know, it's definitely like trying to say that, like, you know, um, or at least he's saying, he's talking about all the all the TVs grazing at your grave at the end as if, you know, um, when you die, uh, the, you know, TVs will be feeding, feeding on your corpse. You know what I'm saying? That sort of thing. Uh, Alberto says he loves Halloween too. I love Halloween too, too. As a matter of fact, I think that they are almost like two parts of the same song. It starts off with Halloween too. Just like if you listen to, um, uh, 12 hits from hell, it starts off with Halloween 2, and then it goes into Halloween 1. That's the proper way to listen. You listen to that, and then it gets fast. But um, for Halloween, it's a, it's a remembrance song. I remember what Halloween was like at uh, when I was a little kid, and I loved it. And um, Brownlee Vertigo and where Skeletal Life is known. And it just it paints a picture. You can almost smell the dead leaves uh rustling on the autumn wind when you listen to halloween it also sounds dangerous you know halloween sounds super dangerous man when you listen to it it sounds like a song of danger uh there's a there's a sense of urgency with halloween it's almost as if he's going to like the the listener is going to um you know uh, like the listener is is going to die and he has to remember Halloween as fast as he can. And that's what I mean by a sense of urgency. Like uh, there's just, and you know, I would love to hear a slow version for all you musicians out there. I want to hear a slow version of Halloween, not like Halloween to Misfits and not like Halloween to Sam Hain, which is my, by far, you know, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that yet. I'll get into that in a little bit. I want to hear a slow version, a haunting, like a bonfires burning bright. Pulsating through the night, I remember Halloween. And then the other voice would kick in. Dead cats hanging from little dead. Like it's almost like it overlaps. It goes. I remember Halloween. Like the ween gets stretched out, and then they say, "Dead cats hanging from poles." Little da- I forgot the words. Um, you know, candy apples and razor blades. And then you hear in the background, like there's some ambience, like ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, Greg says so the Alkaline Trio version. Greg, Greg, I've I never heard of that. I never listened to it. I don't think that they do that. Yes, I agree. Chimes for sure, man. Get the chimes in there, and yeah, with a female choir, little kids, and it would just be like, dun, 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 dun. I remember it. Like I would love that, man. And then at the very end, you get the little kids chant, like almost like dead little kids. You know that sort of thing and it just builds and builds and builds kind of like if you're a beatles fan a day in the life you know how a day in the life uh sort of crescendos with like a orchestra it's like that at the end of halloween uh moving on number 10 cough cool i have to put fucking cough cool on um lately it's just been my obsession it's been blowing me away i love cough cool i love it so much um there's so many people out there that don't like cough cool i'll never understand why uh, it's so different. Those that electric piano sounds like it's electrocuting someone. I feel like someone's being electrocuted. Like <laughs> the history we walk upon, um, and it's just it's that's the type of song that can just be open to endless interpretation, both musically and the lyrics. Recently, there was discussion in the group about how the cough cool lyrics are uh, about a vampire, which I thought was really interesting. Um, 
Pete says he loves the collection two version. Very cool. I agree. Um, and uh, I, yeah, man, I just, ah, I just really, really, really dig cough. Cool. It's just so great. And I love she too. Don't get me wrong, but I had to put one of the two on there. Uh, had to represent the, it's just so out there. As we've said many times, art rock, art rock trio doing some really weird shit um, before they had add the buzz buzzsaw guitar and become the misfits proper. Um, number 11. All right. This is a little snobby. This is a little, um, you know, this is kind of stupid, I guess a little bit. I put West end Avenue and I know that's kind of a cheap shot, but I've listened to the song and I fucking love it. And I wanted to add it to the fucking list. West end Avenue. Dun, 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 dun. West end Avenue. West end Avenue. West end Avenue. Dun, 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 dun. And if you're asking, Hey, how the hell did you hear West end Avenue? If you listen to the first, the very, the pilot episode, which is a long ass episode. If you listen to the pilot episode of this show, um, the 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 Facebook Evil Live show, I believe it's. I'm going to put it in the comments here. Actually, here. Oh, whoops. Uh, if you listen to this show, you will hear. Ah, yeah. oh, there I am. There I am talking. You will hear how that came to be. I'm not going to go into it, Alberto. I just posted it in the comment section. Um, so if you want to hear how I heard West End Avenue, click that link that I just put in the thing. And in the first three episodes, basically nine hours covered that, that whole saga, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I had to put West End Avenue. And like I said, they're the doors, you know, the Misfits started off as like a art rock trio doors sort of band. Um, cough cool is very indicative of what they sounded like as a three piece. And West End Avenue furthers that. So West End Avenue, I'm putting in my top 13 because it was just so mind-boggling to finally... Dun, 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 dun. I'm fucking, I don't fucking... I can't remember that shit. I try to remember. I try to keep it alive in my head. Um, dun, 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 West End Avenue. All right, I'll shut the fuck up. Um, number 12, Come Back. What? Come Back is like the fucking stairway to heaven of misfit songs it's so fucking long dude it's the longest song ever but i love it i love comeback uh comeback is also very much like what they sounded like in 1977 it's a super early song um if you want to try to further imagine what west end avenue sounds like just listen to cough cool listen to theme for a jackal and listen to um fucking comeback um Wolf says, do I like the, yeah, dude, of course I like the original Cough Cool with Glenn on keys. That's what I was talking about. I was talking about the piano going. This tree we walk upon. You know, it just, I love that. I love those keyboards. And, um, and you can hear that piano, I think is also on Cough Cool. I don't know if it's on the, uh, on the, on the live thing. I heard it was on there, but I don't know if it's on Static Age. Is there a piano on Static Age for Cough Cool for uh, Comeback? I just love what the song is about. It's an it's an invocation. Come back is an invocation, bringing somebody back from the dead. I don't even know. I don't know what the fuck he's singing about. Right before the announcement of the Misfits, when we got that little teaser from Riot Fest about the Misfits were coming back, I um I played Come Back on my turntable, um at, symbolically to be like to like you know as an invocation to to bring them back. And I and I chanted, Cuh. and that's another song I would love. I would love. Austin says, Uncle Jeff, great job on the crossover podcast with Loki. Thank you, Austin. It was a lot of fun to do. Had a great time chatting with Loki. Um, he's good people. He could talk forever. Well, he could listen to me talk forever. Because all I would not shut the fuck up. <laughs> but what do you expect when it's me? It's that's what I do. I don't shut the fuck up. Um with come back just like we were talking about halloween i would love to hear i mean let's just get a misfits chance album i want to hear come back as a chant come back little raven like that's more of a gregorian chant you know what i mean just like a lot of oh and maybe some tribal drums you know sam Hain tribal drums and then it just gets there's a lot of angst in come back you know uh you think I realize 
What I've done down on the corner. Da, da, something, something. I'm not alive. Well, I just love it, man. It's so haunting. Comeback is a haunting song. Uh, and it just goes back. It, it also cycles back. It's very simple. It's very simplistic. Um, in another world where the Misfits never broke up and they were still like playing together in the 90s and they're doing like an acoustic set or something, I would just love, I would love them to be doing comeback. I would love to see, I would love to see a, a just a, a comeback, like a, like an unplugged sort of situation. Here he said, slip my horrible corpse. I'm not alive to anyone. I think you really, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the assist, Andy. So do I want Uncle Glenn to sing over the Fiend Club lounge out? No, I want someone to do some interesting fucking covers of this stuff based on my ideas. And I want the credit. I want a producer credit because I thought of those ideas. Um, Alberto says, funny, because Glenn actually loves that stuff. Huh? Did not realize. Uh, all right. My last song, number 13, I had to put. Bu -bu 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 yes, Blood Feast Acoustic. Holy shit, that would sound amazing. God, you guys, you're already participating without the participation part yet. Uh, I Turn Into a Martian is my 13th song. Um, just everything about it. Again, a feeling of empowerment for being on another, for, for feeling like I came from another planet. A feeling of great empowerment. Possession of a mind is a terrible thing. It's a transformation of an urge to kill. Not the body of a man from Earth. Not the face of the one you love because I turn into a Martian. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't even recall my name. Times I hardly ever sleep at night. I turned into a Martian today. It's just like, it's fucking pride, bro. It's pride for being different. It's pride for being from another planet. You know, even if Uncle, <laughs> even if Uncle Glenn is into some really weird shit behind closed doors, I just, man, I'll always love him for this music. I love this fucking music. And I love I Turn Into a Martian. Like I said, I've told the story in the past. I'm going to say it one more time. Growing up, when I wasn't as fat as I am now, you know, my shot, my schnozola was uh, way, look, just beaming from my face. And so I, people would call me Gonzo. They'd call me the kid from Mars because I was weird. And so hearing a song like I Turn Into a Martian, it's okay to be a Martian. It's okay to be from another planet. I love that. That I will love the Misfits forever for that reason. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that concludes the Misfits section of of this of this broadcast. So on tonight tonight's episode is brought to you by Pixie Lights Seltzer. Ooh. Hear that hiss? Okay. Um, on to the Sam Hain. Okay, so now we're moving into Sam Hain. Here are my 13 Sam Hain songs. And if you could guess what number one is, it is Halloween 2. That's right. So Glenn reimagined Halloween 2 for Sam Hain, and he did such a good job. I think Halloween 2, Sam Hain Halloween 2 might be better than Sam than Halloween 2 or Halloween. It is my I love this song. Talk about that once again. He's mixing that sense of urgency and danger with, yeah, like just fucking like the chant, the, this chanting, the ding, 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 ding. It's so dangerous, dude. I feel like a badass walking down the street when I listen to Sam, uh, Sam Haynes Halloween 2 and just listen to like this, this Latin formula, Bruterum, Nectus, this one, et communal Christianum. Street this epitus uh uh fucking uh and then it just goes into the refrain the and when you watch videos of them do that live in like 1985 and they start off slow and then they work their way it's like they work themselves into a frenzy of Halloween, Halloween. It is just, it is something else, man. It is something else. And you know, and you have uh, Erie and Pete going, ooh, ah, 
Ooh, ah, like into the background mics. It just sound it's so yeah, man. Alberto Alberto's going working himself into a, a a frenzy too, man. It is, man. It is, man. It just it's so gothy. Uh, it's just great, man. Um, Peter says, I believe Erie Vaughn in his book, which by the way, guys, we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at misery perfectum the way we did scream with me. So keep keep your keep your Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Stated that John Christ played overdubs on November Coming Fire. What? Get the fuck out of here with that. Really? No. When? How? I got to go back and look at that. I don't think that's correct. I'm not calling you a liar or anything. I'm just saying I'm pretty sure that's not what. I've never heard that in, in any case. Um, that would be really cool if it was true. I would imagine if anybody it would be Glenn doing the overdubs. I don't think they they hadn't met John Christ yet. This would have had to have taken place in 1987, I believe. He says for Halloween too. Huh? Really? I don't know. I don't know. Just just for that song. I don't know. I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to look into that. Um but Halloween 2, man, just fucking melts my face off and just it grows in intensity and just as much as I need to listen to Halloween one and two for the misfits in the month of October, like I need to listen to Halloween two. I almost kind of wish that they had done the original Halloween. They should have just remaked done remakes for both of the songs. But yeah, so that's number one. Halloween two is just my, my jam, uh, my mama jam. Um, and it just, Oh God, I can't stop thinking about Halloween two. I just want to listen to it right now. It's just really 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 good i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to say about it before we move on i guess that's pretty much it metamorphosis lycanthropy presume inquam metamorphosis lycanthropy presume inquam. i mean he's talking about transforming back it's like a witch's chant to transform into a werewolf or something uh jerry had had uh glenn had told jerry at one point that that's the whole point of the of the of the prant the prayer the, the the chant and i believe halloween i think halloween two actually comes before halloween one i'm not certain i am not certain oh my god i agree they should have done a sam hain seven inch of halloween one and two perfect um all right number two in my grip fucking killer way so after so i almost put diablos 88 and night chill in a shared spot on my list of 13 um sam hain songs and i ultimately did not do it uh because i just thought it was like a waste of a, of a slot even though i love diablos 88 even though i love night chill um but i love the way that it goes diablos 88 right into in my grip and that opening guitar riff that i don't even know what is going on with that guitar tone and then that, nah, 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 now um very recently we were chatting in the group and nick I'm, I don't know how to say your last name, Nick. Nick Esposito, Esperito, something. The dude who runs the Stooges fan club on Stoogeaholics. Hold on, I'm going to look for the thing. There's a Wire song, right? There's a Wire song. And um, Wire was a, was a punk band that I guess Glenn was into back in the day as well. And this Wire song is literally in my grip. Like, you, you can, this is exactly where he was inspired for in my in my grip i I'm, I'm convinced i'm convinced it had to have come from here i'm just trying to find it here it's called two people in a room okay i'm not gonna play it here but i'm gonna put it in the comments i would love to hear any uh if anybody agrees i don't think it's a matter of agreeing or not agreeing i think it's fact this is a fact so listen to this song and you tell me that's not where in my grip comes from again all credit goes to nick for that discovery uh really crazy discovery um in my grip is just a brutal fucking song. And the world it dies. In my grip. It's just great. Just great. Not, I can't say enough about that song. Love it. Um, and yes, Pete is right. Uh, Diablo 88 was originally called Wendigo or Wendigo, uh, which captures your imagination. All right. Number three, The Hungry End. Oh my God. What a song. The friggin' Hungry End. There's a baby. In a meat slicer on the kitchen table, like what a what a way to start a song. Glenn's writing. Glenn's sitting there. Hey, Steve, let me call you back when I'm on my walk. No, I'm broadcasting. No, 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 broadcasting. What? What? 
What? What? <laughs> no, I'm broadcasting. What do you want to go with? Let's just talk. You want to just talk? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? You're giving me too much dead air. All right. I, 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 no, no, no. Wait. <laughs> I'm going to hang up on you. Look, I'm hopping around like a monkey. Whoa. <laughs> Hey, hey, oh, hey. No, this is not this is not oh, Sam Hand related. No, fuck no, you. No, no, fuck no, you, Steven. No, no. What? Super entertaining right now. Oh, I just backflip. Whoa. Just landed on my feet. No, Whoa. I'll call you on my walk. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you, Steven. It was my brother. Um number three, the hungry end. Yeah. There's a baby in a meat slicer. Glenn's walking down the street. Hey, you know what? There's a baby in a meat slicer on the kitchen table, all done up. Uh, this song is just, I, I don't even know about this song. I just love it. I love, I love the hungry end. Um, oh shit. Greg's been posting his number, his, his, his track listing. So I'm just going to hold on. This is Greg's, uh, uh then I got to do it for all you motherfuckers. You know, I see there's so, oh, I'm sorry. I've been missing all these comments. You know what? Uh, you, you guys got to come on. If you want to talk, you come on the show. We're going to, we're going to do that in a minute. As soon as I wrap up these lists. Um, Friggin uh the hungry end, dude. Mm, I love that friggin' song. The hungry end is way that brought out a lot. Don't they show that? It's um, and then it goes into this weird like wipeout like surf thing, like <laughs> like what is Damien doing with his guitar? He's just he's holding this chord, just going. Um, and it's just great, man. It's great. The hungry end. I, I love it. I love it. That that fucking EP is is something else. Um, no, uh, number four is ready. So the dead, you close the veil, bum, 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 bum. the change of shapes is alone on hooves. Autumn comes, and brings the pagan death, bum, 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 bum. seek the warmth of the sideway fire. Do you want paradise? Da, 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 da. Do you want a sacrifice? Da, 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 da. This is the night to feast and dine. Da, 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 da. This is the night to laugh at death. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, what a way to open your band. That's a de- that's like they're like. That's like the, the grand opening of a band. It's like, how do we open this band? A song with the name of the band. So just like Black Sabbath had Black Sabbath. What is this that stands before me? Glenn is like, let's do motherfucking Sam Hain, self-titled track, self Uh Sam Hain, sorry. Just stumbled over my words like an idiot. Uh, yeah, I love Sam Hain. I love everything about it. I love the drum. Uh, Steve Zing's drumming is phenomenal on this. And I love the tribal beats and I love what he's salt the dead. You close the veil. The changer of shapes is alone on hooves or long on hooves. Autumn comes and brings the pagan death. Who seeks the warmth of the Samhain fire? It's just so great. It's so great. It's such a short, it's such a short song and it just goes and it just rips, rips through. Um, you know, Pete says, isn't it crazy how that how different that sounds from Earth AD? And I I would love to hear I'd love to hear an Earth AD version of Sam Hain because I think they're actually I think they're quite similar, man. I, I think if maybe you change up the drum drumming a bit, but the drumming is so the drumming is so iconic to that song. Like the drumming, the, the song is identified by that drumming. So you really I don't know if you could change that drumming, but the bum but a bum but a bum but a bum but a bum it's it, you i can feel like that could be on earth ad so the dead close the veil you just got to think of it as a hardcore song so the dead close the veil change your shame since the load on hooves autumn comes and brings the pagan death see the bombs of the sunway fire do you want a paradise it, it would be like uh it would be like we bite like do you want a paradise do you want a sacrifice this is not do feast and dine. This is not do laugh at death. You know, it wouldn't be so um, juggly. I don't, know. I don't know if that makes sense. It's juggly. Um, but I love Sam Hain. 
Uh, number five, November's Fire. Much like the riff for Hungry and the the um the riff for November's Fire is just great. That that intro riff. And speaking of November's Fire, you can get your very own November's Fire sour cream shirt. November's Fire sour cream um, from our store. Link in the link below. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the friggin' joke, motherfuckers that don't understand this joke. Um, yeah, it's pretty freaking great though. That song, um, November's fire, November and forever and ever. We've always sang November coming fire, sour cream, sour cream. All right. Now I got to show this to the shirt. I'm going to plug the shirt. How can I not plug the shirt if I'm talking about the shirt, you know? Um, but you know, it's just one of those Danzig lyrics that you misunderstand what is being said. And so you just go sour cream sour cream you know um and uh it's just a brutal song it's just like you know it's like punk rock for punk rockers and you're like it's like what do you mean jeff what is punk rock for punk rockers it's almost like what i mean by that i'm not saying it right i'm not saying what i mean to say what i really mean to say is that it almost feels like it's it's almost like anti-punk like you know punk rockers listen to like fucking you know whatever like green day and then they hear you listening to something like November Fire. And you're like, what? How on? Like, why are you listening to this? This is so weird. What a weird, what a weird song to listen to, November Fire. You know, like, I'd probably listen to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an American idiot. Oh, the American idiot, you know. Um, and it's so not that. Oh, what do we have here, folks? We have your very own november's fire sour cream shirt get it now folks support the creation of this art oh it wouldn't be a broadcast if i didn't fucking plug something for five minutes so there you go but we're talking about the song november's fire and that's the the hoodie to go with it november's fire sour cream sour cream all right enough of that uh if you want more information go into the links oh no you can see my my cheat sheet don't look there okay up next we have the shift um I love the shift, man. The shift is uh once again, it's like an anti-punk song. The song oh shit. Did you did you did you I cut out for a second? They're all based on they're all based on you know post-punk, they're all based on uh death rock and, and goth. The <laughs> Uh, the ship stops. Dun, 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 dun. You break out in a cold, cold sweat. It, they, they're so unconventional, but they, they, they're so hooky at the same time. Go share. Like, you're just like, they're, they're so on another level. Like, you just don't know what this dude is. Like, this dude is so on another level from what everybody, every other hardcore guy is singing about. Like, you know, like, oh, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, what's a fucking hardcore song? Like, just your 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 cookie cutter hardcore song. And then Glenn Danzig singing, the shift, which is just about, like, changing into a fucking werewolf. And once again, it's one of those songs that starts and stops. It's almost like a slow song. It's almost like a slow song. Um, It's almost like a slow hardcore song via death rock. Doom. And just uh it's brutal, man. It's brutal and it's slow and it's uh just a crazy fucking song. And I would have loved to have included oh, never mind. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Um up next is another one of these slow, brutal songs, motherfucking macabre. Oh, you know, when I'm when this is through, I'm just gonna listen to Initium like straight through as soon as this is done. Macabre macabre what a song oh shit i'm glitching am i glitching right now someone confirmed that i'm not glitching and i will keep talking about my list am i glitching confirm please confirm that there is no glitch hello hello glitch or no glitch are we still glitching this is the one thing i hate about doing a live show I hate streaming. Ah, man, I'm fucking glitching hard, aren't I? Let's see. Take a look at the thing. No. Wolf says no. All right, we're good. Can I keep Can I keep going? I'm going to keep going. 
All right. I'm just going to keep going then. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, now it's okay. All right. So, Macabre, man. I love motherfucking some Macabre. It's great. It is a really, really great song. This is just pure, pure goth. Spiritus, life is pain. Ding, 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 suck you, bus. Life is pain. You know, spine of a cat. You know, da da da, split to form hell. I mean, he's, I don't know what the fuck he's singing about. Uh, and you have that gothic for whom the bell tolls that. Spiritus, birth is pain. Suck you, bus. Life is pain. It's great, man. And it's great live. And people don't talk enough about the song Macabre. It's just so fucking great. Um, and again, it's just like doing something really fucking like imagine how punk rock it is to be playing a song like Macabre in front of a bunch of hardcore kids. That's what Glenn's doing. Glenn's literally up there singing about fucking. A spine of a cat, spine of heaven, split to form hell. Spine of heaven, split to form hell. I think that's the lyric. Great song. Number eight. I think this would be on anybody's fucking Sam Hain list. To walk the night, do, 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 to feel your love. I mean, the most melancholy Sam Hain song out there. Probably one of the most melancholy pre Danzig songs out there right it is a very very melancholy song it's a wonderful song and london or glenn or whoever's playing that stuff is doing some really interesting shit with the drums the night of wonder my whole life long you know and he's saying the night becomes my bride you know it's just great it's really really great his voice is phenomenal on it. And uh, yeah, you just like, it's just like he's going in the opposite direction. And it, it just, it, it's got dynamics. That's what a lot of the Sam Hain material has. Die motherfucking dynamics. Um, and you can hear those dynamics. It's the same thing. You hear the dynamics on Earth AD. You know, the song Earth AD. It's like moving in that sort of direction. Loud, quiet, loud. You know, that's what, like the Pixies. If anybody's a fan of the Pixies, Pixies go loud, quiet, loud. And that's what he's doing with To Walk the Night. That's what he's doing with Macabre, The Shift, you know, and it's nice. It's nice. It's not just a wall of noise. Oh. Um, number nine is fucking Descent, man. Motherfucking Descent. And here's the thing. Descent, you know what's interesting about all those songs on Final Descent? They are, or at least the, the first four songs or whatever, they they really are Sam Hain by way of Lucifuge dancing. You know what I'm saying? Like they're making Lucifuge at the time, or it, I think maybe it's in between uh, Danzig one and two, or right around the time of Danzig one and two. They're doing. Um, it doesn't sound quite. It doesn't sound like Sam Hain. As a matter of fact, if you listen, depending on the version of Final Descent you have, you hear those four other versions, those demos that they did with London May which are Twist of Cain, Possession, and um, uh, Trouble, and uh, Lord of the Left Hand. And those sound, those that's the connective tissue. That's the missing link between Sam Hain and Danzig, right then and there. You listen to Twist of Cain. Twist of Cain is like a metal song, but it's done like Sam Hain. You know, his voice is more guttural and grunty. And you can tell, you can really tell where Rick Rubin Matter of fact, you listen to Twist of Cain on on Final Descent, and you can hear where Rick Rubin changed Glenn. Where Rick Rubin was like, "No, Glenn, don't be so guttural with your vocal. Pull it up. Uh, do more with it." And and Glenn starts going, oh, mama, mama, and love. instead of just being like, you know, uh, really like, you know. Um, so I loved and I love Descent. Descent almost feels like the sequel to Earth AD, you know, in a weird way. I feel like I'm about to fight a battle when I'm listening to Descent. It feels like a song that you charge into battle with, you know. Um, you must descent, you know, just uh, and it's just great the opening and Glenn's just going, same thing with Earth AD, the instead of the uh no, it's just uh 
and then it launches. It goes. It goes. No! And the it sounds like a drum machine. He, it's like he's using a drum machine or something on there. I know John. I know uh, Chuck Biscuits plays drums on one song, and the rest are drum machines. Um, which probably Glenn not wanting to do drums, not wanting to play it, pay a drummer, and not wanting to what not wanting it to sound too Danzigy. I don't fucking know. But there's one song on there, Death in Its Arms, which we're going to talk about in a second, which literally sounds like Lucifuge. Like it's it doesn't sound like a Sam Hain song at all. As a matter of fact, it's done by Danzig. So in 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 fact, in the same way that Erie is sort of like an unofficial member of the Misfits by playing on half of Misfits Collection 2, I know a lot of people would say that's bullshit and you know uh that's heresy. And yes, it is. But the you know, truth of the matter is. Here he played on a bunch of Misfit songs. He did. He did. He even recorded a fucking never before heard Misfit song. And Glenn literally did the same thing with the fucking Lucifuge band with Death in Its Arms. I don't even know. Might as well just go into it. At number 11, we're skipping a track. At number 11 is Death in Its Arms. I love Death in Its Arms. Great fucking song. Weird fucking track. Again, it's like, it, here's a song that is, wait, what? All right. I'm just getting schooled tonight. Pete says death in its arms was meant to be on Lucifuge. So it is a Lucifuge song. All right. Things just got way too fucking complicated now. Hold on. All right, Pete, you got to explain that shit, but not right this second. But, you know, Pete, why don't you fucking hop on the show real quick when we uh, do the do the link thing, um, which we're doing shortly. If I could get through this fucking list, it's impossible. I just want to talk about every goddamn song. Um, in any case, death in its arms. Is another one is another track I picked. Apparently, it's supposed to be a Lucifuge song that blows my mind for a whole bunch of different reasons. It's a great track. It feels like Danzig. It does not feel like Sam Hain, but I'm putting it on there because I like it so much. I suppose that's kind of a waste of a Sam Hain track. What can I do? Uh, in between those two was number ten, Black Dream. Fucking Black Dream. Just another. You know, if you're gonna open your album with Sam Hain, the song. You follow it up with a with a ripper like Black Dream, which upon my first listen, almost 20 years ago, I listened to Black Dream was my first ever listen of Sam Hain. I'd heard that it was Glenn's other band. And I'm like, all right, what's this about? And it was in that moment when I listened to that song, I said, oh, so Black Dream, it's just a continuation of the Misfits. That's literally what I thought of it at the time. It's just Misfits with different people. That's what that's what Black Dream feels like to me. It, it really Black Dream feels like it really could have been on um truly could have been on uh, earth ad for sure i think we've got a an ep an a, 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 an earth ad a sam hain earth ad ep forming with some songs you got sam hain you got black dream i don't know what else but you got him um Fucking Black Dream, man. Great fucking song about a succubus. Brim, brim, Black Dream. And it just, it's just, it, it's just, it's a bad motherfucking song. It makes you feel like a bad motherfucker when you listen to it. I love it. Um, Number 12. I love this song. I hate what it's really about, Gulp. Uh, Especially with all the shit that I've been talking about. Lords of the Left Hand. But not Lords of the Left Hand. Um, Not the one that he sort of re-recorded. The demo with fucking London May the really fast version, the original version. I can, won't even attempt to sing it. I don't even know. It's just, I just love the, I love the energy of it. The it's almost, it's almost like the opening of fucking Detroit rock city in a weird kind of way. But instead it's like, um, it's, and it's got this weird drum beat, the and then he's singing, I'm at war with the planets, at war with mankind. So uh, the left hand, the Lords of the Left Hand, that is some weird, like, fucking Nazi occult shit uh, upon other shit. That just weird Glenn fucking, you know, every school child should have this book. I don't even want to say anything more about it because it's just going to make me open my mouth. Um, Lords of the fucking Left Hand, great fucking song, though. Uh, and lastly, I number 13, I have The Howl. Um, with the howl is almost like part two of the shift. They're both about being werewolves, I guess, or something. Uh, I just love it. It's another really weird fucking song. Um, it just sort of gallops along. Do do do. I'm not even gonna attempt to try that, but. Sort of house. 
no, 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 no. And, you know, you, uh, if you listen to the live versions, you hear those backup vocals from Erie and, and Damien. They're great. Um, and it's just a great song. I love the howl. I love the howl. Uh, there's a really great fan video that someone did of like werewolf shit for the howl uh, on YouTube. If you can find it. Um, and my blood just goes to work. When you hear the how, wow, wow, wow. Okay, moving on. All right, here we go. The final 13 songs. Ready, steady, go. All right, sitting at number one, probably my single most favorite Danzig song. What do you think it's going to be? What's it going to be? Mother. Fuck no, it's not mother. I hate mother, as a matter of fact. I can't stand. Mother is like monkey gone to heaven. It's like Blitzkrieg bop. It's like a song that you fucking everybody knows and it's just fucking i hate hearing it i i wouldn't mind if i never heard it again i just you know i'm tired of it i i, I whatever it was a great did i did i love it at one point of course i did but i'm just like fuck <laughs> you know i just uh yeah alberto no mother of mercy that's right motherfucker no mother of mercy i love mother of mercy great song did not did not include it on my list did not include it on my list Remember, these are not my favorite songs of all time. These are just 13 favorite tracks or 13 tracks that I'm really into at the moment because it changes all the time for me. Um, so my number one Danzig song is, and this is my number one Danzig song, Possession. First time I heard Possession blew my fucking hair back. This, you know, of all the lists that I made, the hardest list to make was Danzig list because there were so many tracks that I wanted to include from Danzig one and Danzig two Danzig. I can listen to every single track all the way down. Even mother. I don't care. Huh? Wait, what? Wolf says I have to leave in a minute, but I have an interesting story of when Danzig toured Auckland, New Zealand in 93. And he heard of, Oh my God, that's you Wolf. And he heard about my friend misfits cover band and came down to the bar. Uh, they were playing in the band, joined them on stage. Yes. Oh, my God. Wolf, get in touch with me, motherfucker. Hey, Wolf, I want to hear that fucking story. We're going to have you on. Oh, my God. I want to hear that story. I've seen the pictures. I've heard this. I've heard this. But, I mean, did you not just tell the story? Is there more to the story? I want to fucking hear the story. It was a great fucking story. Um, what They must have fucking geeked out so hardcore. Um, yeah. All right. But that's whatever. An, an, another day. Possession, the first time I heard Possession, it blew my fucking hair back. I didn't know what to expect. It sounds like the opening of hell. It sounds like hell is opening up. I feel like, talk about like, so, like these, this, the theme about these songs, Wolf, hey, Wolf, buddy, just message me, okay? Uh, message me on the, on the, the low, I usually don't check the Lodi inbox. Just send me a, um, a message, okay? Uh, on there. We'll, we'll, we'll coordinate that. Um, it's a shame you have to go because I would have loved to just heard it right now. Come on, Wolf, you got to go right now. Fucking hell. Um, yes, Alberto, he sings background on Twist of Cain and Possession. And um, I just love Possession. It sounds like the gates of fucking hell are opening up. The it sounds like all the sounds that were later used for Doom, you know, the video game Doom. It just sounds like they were all Danzig got them all for this track because you hear this like. Aah! And uh, it's Possession Man. It's like a song, I guess, about the exorcist or some shit. And, um, you know, Glenn is just, you know, I just love. Uh, and there's like a woman's voice on there on that track, too. I want to crawl inside your skull, nestle in your brain, stand you on your head, down, 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 crouch you on our falls, down, 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 down. It's so fucking good spiritus i think they do spiritus and succubus again spiritus possession <coughs> wolf just have bring your friends on too tell your friends to come on all the things that you say and feel because possession. Right in. Now, I love the Sam Hain version, too. The Sam Hain version is, wait, what? Alberto says you could play it backwards and it has some message. Is that what it's at the beginning? The it sounds like something is backwards. Um, 
probably Glenn making fun of the whole backwards satanic thing, but it's just a fucking great song. And just that, that guitar riff is so fucking mean and nasty and just like gets, gets under your skin, crawls up your spine, man. And yeah, the Sam Hain version is slower and there's like still this dread. Uh, and again, possession, listening to possession on Danzig versus listening to the Sam Hain possession. You can hear, Rick Rubin change Glenn Danzig. You hear the change. You hear how he produced the band into being more of what they were, what they would become as Danzig. Um, and it's just a fucking great, all the things that you say and feel that uh, that's where James does the backing vocals on all the things that you say and feel big composition. Right it's just fucking great, dude. It's such a great song. I never get tired of talking about it. I never get tired of listening to it. It is my absolute number one favorite Danzig song. Number two, fucking tired of being alive. It sounds probably really horrible. Like it's, I can hear it in my head and yeah can't play it back on the thing do 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 oh yeah ripping you down i just love it man i love everything about it i love the guitar when i'm tired of bleeding life it's just such a great fucking song spot on the bleeding oh sorry i'm just like getting so pumped thinking about the song I love Tired of Being Alive. Probably my second favorite dancing track, if I'm being honest. Uh, I loved hearing it live. I love it. I love everything about it. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a great rocker, man. And it just doesn't feel... It's just like... It's like pop metal, man. It's really pop metal when you listen to it. I know that sounds weird to say, but it is. It's very hooky. It's very infectious. And I just... I can't say enough good things about fucking Tired of Being Alive. Whoa, Alberto says that... Alberto, you know some shit. Alberto says that's Tommy Victor's favorite song. I, I did not know that. He plays it great live. I love listening to him do it. Um, number three, another. I, I'm, these are really in the order, I guess, of my favorite dancing songs, so start, starting out at least. Number three, Sestina's. I, I, not only is Sestina's one of my favorite dancing songs, I think Sestina's is one of the greatest songs Glenn Danzig has ever written. I think it's the closest thing that we've ever really gotten to you know, besides like all that Elvis shit, I talked about this on the Elvis episode, you know, the um, reviewing uh, Danzig sings Elvis, that that these covers are, are quite personal to him and he's singing them with great conviction. And um, not that he's not singing anything else with conviction, but it's just there's just something about there's something about Sestina's Sestina's where you really feel like you really you really, really, really feel his melancholy. We're talking about that to walk the night melancholy you feel that again on sustina's and you feel like he's really singing about someone that he lost and um it's just a beautiful song it feels like the perfect fusion of like ray orbison and um not in terms of like sound quality per se like not like not like not like vocal quality but it sounds like it's like a ray or orbison like i can imagine ray orbison covering that song you know, but doing like triplicate, like guitar work, like ding, 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 take my hand, ding, ding, ding. I can't do a Ray Orbison um, uh, voice, you know, but uh, it's just, it's beautiful. And then um, always on my mind, maybe it is, is the, it's almost like he's showing us the songs that influenced his Danzig stuff when he's singing that Danzig sings Elvis. And I think it's the always on my mind track. It's either that one or there's another one where he, you literally are like, this is where Sestina's come came from in the same way that um, maybe it's baby. Let's play house is like American nightmare. And you're like, what? I'm like, no, no, for real. If you listen to American nightmare, I think it's either baby played house or I don't know, go back and listen to the episode. I'm fucking this all up. Let me just move on um, up next number four. And you've seen that YouTube clip a hundred times. Very famous, iconic show for the band in 93, Halloween 93, Irvine Plaza, Irvine Meadows, sorry, Irvine sold out show at Irvine Meadows, Halloween show. Um, the show has never been released in full, but it's come out on a slew of things. You've heard those tracks on Thrall Demon Sweat Live. And I, my preferred version for Left Hand Black, it which is the song, my version, my preferred version is actually the Demon Swat, the Demon, the Thrall Demon Sweat Live version of 
left hand black. I like it so much more um, than the studio version, which I feel is actually sort of mixed very flat. It feels flat to me, like very, it's not very, there's no dimension to the song. It's very, um, I don't know. I don't know how, this, how else to describe it. It's just how it feels to me. Uh, maybe it feels just too perfect, like too studioized. Like I need to hear like that live rawness that you get on, on Thrall. And the band never sounded tighter. That is at that point, I feel like that is the pinnacle. The pinnacle of Danzig as a band, as an entity. No offense to any other fucking members of this band. I'm just simply saying that them playing that 90, it was 92 or Vine Meadows, not 93, 92. The band has been on the road for fucking years. They've been same lineup, no lineup changes, and they are an iron snare. They're just, or they're like a iron trap. They're just so tight. They, they, it's like they can tele, like telepathically communicate. They're, they're working in perfect simpatico and it's perfectly represented on left hand black on Thrall Demon Sweat Live. And you can see that footage and you just, you feel it, man. You feel the energy. Can't say enough good things about that song. Love it. Number five is going to come to as a surprise to many, perhaps. From Danzig 777. What? Without light, I am. This song fucking cranks. Holy shit, is this a great song. Um, and I don't know what is he saying. What are the words? Don't die, down the stone. <coughs> uh, Joey is great on the drums. He's saying something like, "I am so listen proud. I am not." Like your ah, uh, Steve Zing. Steve Zing says, eh. Steve, what is your okay? Steve, what is your favorite Danzig song? And what is your favorite Danzig song to play live, too? You have to answer that one as well. Um, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying before Steve decided to tell me that he doesn't like without that. I am. Um, I just love this song. I, I, and you know, I guess it closes out the numbered albums, right? Danzig 777 is the last number numbered album right so it's like the final song and i just like the refrain chorus the without life wait without I, all right i i can't sing it whatever you just know what i mean it's a great fucking song i love the i love the guitar hook on it um i love uh fucking todd youth doing that that guitar that <laughs> Um, and yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. I am so you can really hear the rasp on his voice at this time. I am so listen proud. I am not. Oh, come on, Steve. Give me a break. Steve doesn't want me to sting. All right, Steve. Well, it's not. You know what, Steve? It's my show and I'm still going to sing. I have to. I can't help it. Um, but uh yeah man that song is fucking great oh and the way the keyboards come in at the end the ding, ding, whatever and then he goes into without light i am something like that uh great song uh up next number six snakes of christ classic a classic fucking song it's great um once again done really well live on thrall just fucking great it just the song cooks um it really is a great it's you know a lot you always hear talk about the you always hear talk about the opener song like what's a strong opener but like what's a strong second song you know we talked about sam hayne being like oh no we talked about black dream being like a great way to follow up a song like sam hayne on initium and it's like it's like fucking uh snakes of christ is a great way to follow up long uh a long way back from hell it's just fucking perfect you know um and it just and it goes on and on and on and it feels like a it feels like a, a locomotive that just doesn't that just doesn't stop uh and it's got a hook man it's just got a great hook um and so yeah that's number that's number six uh number seven long way back from hell baby another great fucking album opener fucking uh those fucking guitars that 
it sounds like an airplane is landing and then but then it sounds like a there's like a chug a lugging and uh glenn just like shrieks he shrieks and just starts singing about slavery down in new orleans goddess of the bayou light black dog's head on a demon bed like you know um it's great it's a great fucking song that's another song that you feel like you would just rock it karaoke you know what i mean just be a really fun karaoke song to do um and it just it just scorches man it's a great way to open open uh, uh o- open things up uh number eight is godless i think godless might be one of the best friggin openers of all i mean and you know Oh, you know what I just realized I did not put on here, but I totally meant to put on here. I must have lost it. Fucking uh, uh, Skin Carver, which I know that some people don't like to play live at all. Um, Skin Carver is uh, a great fucking song, a great fucking opener. Uh, But before they had Skin Carver, they had Godless. And Godless went with Chuck Biscuits on drums, dude. Holy shit. He was like... um, What's it called? It was like uh fucking John Bonham with that shit. You know, just be like a madman. And then Glenn comes out and goes, <laughs> you know, just like just just going off the chain, going off the chain. Um, and it feels like I don't know, it feels like a demonic Led Zeppelin or something. I don't know what it is. Um, but that that opening drum thing that it just goes on and on and then uh john christ comes in it's great it is really really great you can you can awesome you can live your life based on the final lines of godless what are the fu- oh yeah 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 i don't know okay i don't know what that is off the top of my head but yeah 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 um holy shit wait 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 awesome you can all right whatever i'll i'll look i'll look it up later somebody get put Alberto, put those lines in the thing, in the thing, put the lines. Um, Steve, I don't know if you're still there, but I want to hear your fucking, what's, what's your favorite uh, Danzig songs? Let's go. Come on, Steve. Um, up next, fucking not of this world. Fucking just great. Not of this world. No, 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 no. It's fucking great, man. Um, he's just, uh, I don't know, man. It just cooks. It just cooks in that groove. You know, I don't even know what I don't know what he's saying in it. I really don't. And it just uh it's just really it's really great. Um, not of this world. And honestly, I really want to tie that with soul on fire. Uh, but I left that off the track. But that's not of this world. Um, up next, uh blood and tears, man. Again that glenn is fucking phenomenal at writing like slow melancholy songs and once again i guess i guess blood and tears is almost like it's the same sort of thing like you know it feels like this song was written personally well do i know do any of us know no but it just feels very personal blood and tears darling don't you do it's fucking great dude um blood and tears blood and tears i like uh i like it i like it a lot um although i think it's sequenced wrong on the album i think blood and tears should be more in the middle instead of at the end or it should be the final track i don't like where it sits it doesn't sit it sits towards the end uh yeah Elbro says it's very elvis like here's what is said at the end of uh godless i ask all who gathered here to join me in this feast May we always be strong in body, spirit, and mind. And all of those who try to harm us, let them cast aside. I love it. Fucking beautiful. It is beautiful. But uh, blood and tears. And then number 11, I don't think Glenn Danzig's voice has ever been better. Like, everybody agrees. This is unanimous, man. Fucking you and me, dude. Less than zero. It's technically not a Danzig song. Technically, it's the Glenn Glenn Danzig Power Fury Orchestra. But it's fucking phenomenal, man. It's just great. Um, I, I love the way I, I just love the way it fucking goes, man. And, uh, uh, I wish we had a whole album of that. I wish there was a whole album of you and me type shit. Um, it's just one of those songs. It, it almost feels like it, it almost feels gospel-y like a gospel song, like dark gospel. 
like wouldn't you want a glenn danzig album full of satanic gospel shit like just like dark satanic gospel music like the reverse of gospel because gospel is about like what like jesus or whatever they have like dark gospel i think that would be really really great so you and me probably the single finest that's danzig's voice at its peak at its peak in, in misfit samhain or danzig that's that's his voice at its greatest potential greatest power fucking you and me um number 12 this one might feel a little random fucking black angel white angel i love this song i don't know what it is he was playing this a lot playing this a lot in uh 2009 2010 maybe um around there when he was opening with skin carver well he still opens with skin carver um i love black angel white angel uh it just it just has a great hook um i really don't remember the song because it's been so long since i've sung it so i'm not going to even attempt to but it's really fucking great um and lastly um whoa Oh, under her black wings. Um, it's great. Her black wings, man. Her black wings. Uh, I mean, Lucifuge cooks, man. You know, Lucifuge, I know this sounds really weird. Lucifuge always feels like a 70s album, like a 70s classic rock album by way of the Danzig sound. You know, like, how does that work? I don't know. But it just feels like um, the, the, the guitar riffs, the way that they chug um the 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 choruses the um the the hooks it just all fucking works and with that i am exhausted going through 39 glenn danzig songs uh fucking 39 songs from the legacy of brutality and now we're gonna do something we've never done before i'm so sorry dude no soul on fire i said that i said I picked not of this world and I should have, you know, I don't know. I did not do soul, soul on fire. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Um, okay. So here's, so this is going to be interesting. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try this. I'm going to put, I'm going to put this in the uh, browser. We don't have a lot of people here. We, 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 we've been fluctuating. We've been going up and down. We had, we had as many as 16 people and gone down all the way to five. And it's been, up and down, up and down. So I don't know who's gonna who's gonna come on, who's not gonna come on, who's gonna say something, who's not gonna say something. I'm putting a link in the chat. So if you feel like coming on here and telling me some some of your favorite songs, or if you just have comments or maybe you know questions or something, I don't know. Um, feel free. There's the link. It's in the browser right now. Here I'm putting it up. Oh, I had it up here. Come on, come on the air, motherfuckers. Somebody say something. Don't make me feel embarrassed and humiliated for putting it out there. Um, trying to do like audience participation. I want to hear what your your songs. If you can go through them really quickly, we could do your 13 of each. If you dare, if you feel like it. Um, otherwise, I really don't have anything else. I think I'm spent with this show. It was uh, fun, fun to go through those tracks. Uh, so if nobody uh, comes on, then I guess we could try and save it another day. Or maybe it just doesn't work. I don't know. Clock is ticking, though. I've been going for uh, 62 minutes now. 82 minutes. Um, yeah, so if you, feel like, if you feel like coming on the show and want to join me, if you have a camera, or even if you just want to do audio, if you don't feel comfortable coming on camera, you can just do audio. You can do that as well. Um, and if not, I will just do my, my, um, my outro stuff and we'll, we'll call it a night up to you. Now is the time. Now is the time. We got eight people watching. If anybody wants to join us, here's your chance. Come on, come on. Don't be shy. Introduce yourself. Say hello. You Peter, you don't need a laptop, buddy. Peter, you don't need a laptop. You can do it from your phone. I've done it many times from my phone. Oh, we lost someone. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna. All right. Well, I'm gonna do my outro stuff. If no, I'm gonna leave this link up. If nobody does it, I'll I'll just end the broadcast. And we. Oh, yeah, we got someone. Alberto is in the waiting room. Ready? I'm gonna add him on. Yo, what's up, Alberto? How you doing? Hey guys, how you doing, everybody? Oh, we got coming, to uh, coming to you from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. 
Yeah, this is international, motherfucker. Hey, Greg, I see Greg. Greg is in the waiting room. Greg, I'm going to give you a shot in a few minutes. I'm just going to chat with uh, Alberto. We're, we're just going to, that's how we're going to do it, okay? We'll just, we'll, we'll go through people. I'll uh, do that sort of thing. Well, welcome. You're the first, like, video guest I've ever had on the show. Well, cool, cool. It's an honor. It's an honor. I love your uh, podcasts. They're amazing. Your insights and uh, your knowledge of uh, Glenn and the Misfits and everything, Glenn uh, Danzig. So, yeah, it's awesome, man. Always going to support you. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's just fun. I, it's fun to just chat about some nerdy shit that, you know, we're really <laughs> nerdy about. I'll tell you what, yeah. why don't you give me, um, give me one of your, I know you were saying it in the chat right now on the air. Give me uh, one of each of your favorite songs. Okay, well, I'll start up. I'll and start watch. off with Danzig. Yeah, I was lucky enough uh, a couple of years ago. You probably remember this. I got to jump on the bus and uh, hang out with Glenn for roughly for an hour. We got to watch The Walking Dead together. It was awesome. And I squeezed in telling him, you know, I love the song uh, Netherbound. Off, oh, wow. um, I love it. I love that song. It just, it's a great song. So I got to tell him, I go, you know, you should add it to your set list. And he kind of, you know, uh, sighed back and chuckled a bit. He goes, ah, oh, you know, Steve has to learn the parts and everything. And uh, he goes, uh, it's never going to happen. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So so for dancing, I really love Netherbound, one of those underground tracks. Really Wait, just on, an amazing before you song. Continue. Before yeah. you continue. Wait, so what was that? That must have been so fun to watch Walking Dead with Glenn on his bus. It was. It was amazing. I was on there. We were chatting for roughly about an hour or so. And then uh, we started talking about The Walking Dead. I had originally told him that, you know, Glenn, I feel like you would have been, you would be a great Negan. Uh, I think you should be. A, this was just before the Negan character was going to present himself. And I'm a big fan of the comic books. So I was telling him, you know, have you ever thought of, you know, would they ever consider putting you on the show? Because you would be an awesome Negan. And he, yeah. he thought about it. He looked at me and he goes, you know, I don't think so. He goes, uh, they take a lot of British actors and what have you. I go, uh, so, you know, he kind of goes, but, I, you know, and that's when he mentioned he actually wrote a song for the show. And um, they, unfortunately, they never ended up using it. So he just put it on the last album. But uh, and then he goes, oh, yeah, speaking oh, of The that. Walking Dead, he's like, put it on, you know, because <laughs> it's on right now. So we got to watch it just before he got up on stage. So we watched a bit of it. It was really cool. Yeah. Right, what's your Sam Hain song? I'm surprised you didn't mention this. <laughs> I really, I mentioned it in the comments. All guts, all blood, all. I love all that blood. track. Yeah. All, all, all Yeah. Blood. Yeah. Love so it. I love that one. And the Misfits, it's extremely difficult because I love so many of them. Uh, Children in Heat is one of them that uh, I, I, I'm. But, but one song I'm dying. I am dying for the Misfits to do live, either in a reunion show in the future, in the doorway. I think uh, that's one of the most underrated Misfits songs right ever. Down. I love that song. And you were you were mentioning vocals. And I think that uh, Glenn's vocals on that track is just amazing. Yeah, it's dude. just amazing. Yeah, I love in the doorway. Yeah, dude. so those are my three, uh, I think, that uh, you know, I could listen to and I have listened to over and over and over and over again. But yeah, so those are my three. Hey, Alberto, it's very nice to meet you face to face. Thank you yeah. so much for being on the show and not making me feel like a gigantic loser for putting my, my link no. out there. <laughs> no, no, that's all good, bro. You're doing a great job. You're, you're supporting Danzig and everything Danzig. Uh, Steve came on. That was awesome. So just keep doing what you're doing. You're and uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, maybe I'll see you at Cycle Fest next year. Uh, Danzig is going to be doing the full Lucifuge uh, album. It's going to be amazing, and hopefully we'll get that uh, merch, that secret merch that the Psycho people have. They have, like, this Dante cross that they were originally going to sell, cool. so I hope I hope they bring that out. But I'll be there at Psycho cool. Fest. It's going to be awesome, so hope cool, you man. can make it. Peace and hair grease. Thank you. All right, bro. Take care. You too. Bye. All right. Up next, up next we have – all right, I'm kicking you from the studio. Up next, we have Greg. I see Peter. I see you just entered. We're just going to go one at a time. Greg, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? I I'm good, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming on the show. Of course. I uh, I like to lurk around a lot, but not participate yeah. a whole bunch. So, <laughs> okay. That's so yeah, this is, this is a first for me. So, yeah. oh, Great, man. Glad to have you on the show. Uh, so you. give me your three. Give me your give me your uh, Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig picks. 
uh, Misfits uh, in the doorway. It's always been my favorite. So nice. it'll never stop being my favorite. Um, so Sam Hain, it also, also has to be uh, To Walk the Night. Um, I, for some reason, I go towards Glenn's like croony songs in his earlier bands. So those are my two favorite favorites. And for Danzig, that's the hardest one. Um, but it would probably have to be 777. Oh, seven, seven. See, that's I'm telling you, Lucifuge is secretly like it's like a 70s classic rock album. I'm well, sure yeah, it even has a Doors album out. cover. Sorry? It's got a Doors album cover. Yeah, it's got a Doors album cover. I'm sure Glenn would be very mad to hear that, but I feel like that <laughs> feels very 70s ish in that sort of way to me. Oh, yeah. But that's cool, man. Hey, Greg, listen, yes. thank you so much, man. Thanks for coming thank on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. And uh, tune in next time, all right? Will do. All right, man. Be all well. right, take Be it well. easy. Peace. Oh. All right. Whoa. I'm kicking you. I'm kicking you, Greg. Boom. And next up, we got Peter. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm glad you got a setup. Good, good. Yeah, I figured, I figured it out. Hey, Real quick, let's see that mug. You got the mug? Let's see what the mug looks like. I'll grab it. Hold on one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll 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 fill the dead air. Uh Pete has a they came from Lodi mug, a pink one. And uh I think it's like the coolest thing ever, ever. And he took a picture with it. And I feel like he needs to have it in the frame while he uh uh educates us on some stuff that he knows. Um, I want to hear what he I want to hear the story about how fucking uh, what was it? Death in its arms is actually a uh, who's a mawatch a watch or whatever. Oh shit! What just fell? Oh, oh my god! That that you know, I was really, I'm I'm kind of like I'm kind of bummed that the the Verotic episode, the Veronica episode, didn't work out. But at the same time, it was just it was just too hard to do without having the movie there. It just wasn't gonna happen. This wasn't gonna work out. All right, let's see that mug. I think I got it buried somewhere. So. I got oh, right. to Yeah. All right. No worries. All right. So tell me. So first, tell me your three picks. Your three misfits, Sam Hain and Danzig picks. I got a uh, Ghoul's Night Out, uh, oh. In the Doorway, and uh, Wolf's Blood. And then I have um, Sam Hain's Tough because that's my favorite one. But uh, I have to go with um, Unholy Passion. Ooh. Um, more bun, and uh, oh my god, we forgot about that. Yeah, and uh, Mother of Mercy, and then for the uh, dancing, I got Let It Be Captured. And actually, yeah, I like uh, Ashes off the uh, fifth one. Yeah, and um, probably Black Mask, but because Seven's a good one too. So. Wow, you are like a hardcore dancing fan, dude. That was hardcore. Like <laughs> those are real. I wouldn't call. I don't know if they're deep cuts, but those are like not. You know, usually when you hear, I mean, they're just those are unconventional. That's you're hardcore. <laughs> that <is> hardcore. <laughs> um, freaking uh, Moribund is a very interesting song. Um. It's really fucking weird. There's a lot of weird instrumentation on it. Um, it just sort of... Oh, we got someone else in the waiting room. I see you, Wolf. Hang in there. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out the lyrics to that song forever. Are they not available <laughs> at all? I couldn't find the correct ones anywhere. Something... What's that is done? Tell me done. It cannot be undone. It's done. But it's done. Like something like, something like about being undone and then done and then not undone. And then yeah, I can never two. figure it out. That's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> there's like sleigh bells. It's like sleigh bells on there. Yeah, it's uh, it's like really weird guitar chords or something. That's what oh. I love about the same Hain stuff is the, the guitar is so hard to uh, reproduce. You know what I mean? Do you play like guitar? It, oh yes. So, so tell me why. Explain from a from a guitar player's perspective. Explain why those those chords are hard to replicate. Uh, like November is fire. I, I just, I don't know. Like you could probably find tablature of it, but it just never sounds the same. So I don't know if the tuning might have been a little lower. 
you know, for lots, a lot of that stuff. So do you think that's because, um, does that also have to do with like the rig that, that, uh, Damien was using like the, um, whatever, like the, um, the, the cab, the, the, the head, the, the, the strings, the, just all that stuff. Do you think that that plays a factor into it as well? Yeah. Like he, I know that like they use like a lot of harmonics and stuff, you know what I mean? The palm muting and stuff. So that, that's definitely like an element too, you know? And you know, what's great on some of that later Sam Hain stuff, he starts like, especially on, um, there's a couple of shows where they're doing Halloween too. And he has this weird, device on his mic that m makes his voice sound like super like demonic oh the harmonizer is that what it is it's a harmonizer. yeah holy crap that thing is nuts <laughs> it's such an interesting choice um to use live because he doesn't really use it in the studio in that kind of way you know i don't know um i i could literally i i think of i mean i love the misfits obviously the misfits is my favorite i love danzig but I think by far the most interesting and least talked about is Sam Hain. And the fact that it's not just the thing that's most interesting about Sam Hain is like, you have to remember like the environment, the environment that Sam Hain took place in. Like, it's just, you know, the underground hardcore punk scene, you know, like they're not playing with, they're not playing with death rock bands. They're not playing with goth bands. They're playing with hardcore bands. What a weird band to be mixed in with all those other bands yeah so i don't know but listen it's really nice to meet you pete thanks for coming on i'm hoping to like make this more of a habit in the future to try and like you know open up a conversation really glad you, you came on and everything uh and i hope you'll come on again in the future okay? yeah cool man thanks cool very nice to virtually meet you you Peace too and air grease. Okay, up next we have Wolf. I don't know who this is. Wolf. Hey man, can you hear me? Oh shit, is this the dude from fucking New Zealand? <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, we have a caller all the way from New Zealand. I've, I'm actually that? in Australia at the moment. I'm from New Zealand originally, but I'm actually in New South Wales, Australia at the moment. All right, this is super freaking cool. Thank you, Wolf, for joining us. Cool, man. Yeah, my name's actually Pat. Hi, Pat. I'm going to call you yeah, Pat yeah. Wolf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool, man. <laughs> um, so, you, so, Pat, you, your friends, your friend's band, Hate Breeders, was a Misfits yep. tribute band. I've, I've heard the story, and I've seen the pictures. Have you so, really? Who told you? What do you mean? Who? T this is like a famous story. Oh, no. I is it Really? I mean, like, this is like a known thing. Yeah, those pictures have been around forever. They're, yeah, they only yeah. played New Zealand one time, right? Yeah, yeah. 93, I think it was a Demon Sweat tour, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they, it was a tiny stage that they did those songs with the, with the band. Yeah, it was a, yeah. It was, a, it was a bar called Bob's Bar at, at a hotel called Hotel de Brett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't, I wasn't there. I met them a few years later. Um, gotcha. maybe two or three years later. So, but I'm good friends with um, the bassist, the guy who was the bassist for the Hate Breeders, and I've just messaged him just recently because we've actually fallen out of contact um, mm -hmm. to find out some detail or maybe get him um, on there so you can hear the full story because it's an amazing story. Um, I'm interested yeah, in what that. you know about it. Okay, well, I will tell you what I know about it, but before I do, I don't really know that much apart from what you really said, but... I would love to actually talk to those dudes. So if you could yeah. put me in touch with them or get them in, on, on involved. Wolf, For sure. I, I yeah. yeah. That. If you want to hear the full episode of tonight, it's going to be on YouTube. Cause you said, cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. About beginning or whatever. What I know, I I've seen the, fo the photos posted. I don't know. Maybe it was one of, one of those band members who posted those photos. I remember Glenn is wearing like a black, long black turtleneck or something. Yeah. And they got up on a tiny stage. They borrowed their yep. gear and they, they played. Cause I think what, ha I think the, 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 the gist of the story is, and I really, I hope that your friends could provide a, a shitload of more deep, like you could really sit back. And yeah. Yeah. The story. Um, but the, the gist of the story is that, yeah, they're in a cover band. Glenn heard that they had nothing to do that night in Auckland. It was just nothing for them to really do. So they went down, they checked out, they checked them out or something. And then yep. they got up and said, and said, 
here's how it's really done or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to get the detail. I can't remember. I know they've told me the story and I've heard multiple versions of it. Um, they were in various states of inebriation at the time. So ah. it does vary just a little bit. But I want to know what songs they played. They did tell me, but I cannot for the life of me remember. Um, mm. And from what I understand, it was, was it the sound, manager? Right? Danzig's manager, I think, was the one that heard. Um, and he was the one who told them about it, who took them down. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to get info. Yeah, yeah, like the full info because it's it was. I remember it being an amazing story. I mean, they told me mm -hmm. the story twenty years ago, so um, you know, it's all almost yeah. Um, Alberto, who was just on our show, says Glenn mentioned that they were not playing the songs right, so Glenn and Erie kicked them off and played the songs. Uh, that sounds about what I heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I want to know what the song was. I can't remember, but I, look, I'll contact him and, and get some yeah. some real juice for you because um, um, it's it's a great story. And um, but yeah, I'd like to get him sober. So, yeah. Um, yeah. but there's quite a few fiends that are around who were in the crowd that night. And the guy, I spoke to the guy, messaged him on Messenger once, who took those photos that you probably mm. saw. Yeah. And what yeah. did he say anything in particular that you remember? Or? What's that? Sorry. Uh, that guy told you anything, any sort of interesting details that you remember? Um, no, or? it was more about who was there. I was trying to establish who he was and, and what, how he managed to get there and what the vibe was like, because, you know, like the hey breeders, they were good, man. They were really good. And I actually went with them to a show in Melbourne in 1999 mm -hmm. and I traveled from, New South Wales down to Melbourne. I got up on stage with them um, and um, we all painted up our face and stuff like that. It was fucking insane. Um, and um, they were really good. And the lead singer, it was his project, extremely passionate about the Misfits. Um, and he sounds a lot like Danzig. Um, and he's a big Elvis fan. And um, he was the one that kind of got me into the Misfits. So, but I have fallen out of touch with him. So, I would really like to contact him and, and kind of get some more info. But they were the real deal. They used to do Halloween every year for at least a dozen years. And they would play mm -hmm. in various locations until that one year in 99 where they traveled from New Zealand to Melbourne to do a one-off one show. Um, and I was with them the whole weekend, the build-up to the show. I was with them in, in practice and everything like that. And they were good, man. They were good. They were really passionate. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Um in general, those markets are hard to get to, like, you know, Australia and New Zealand and, and such are yeah. hard to get to for, for certain levels of bands. Like you have to be, you have to have some name for yourself. You have to have some sort of like, you know, good promotion. I remember um, even just like a smaller band that I was really into when they got a chance to tour Australia, this band, uh, Nobody, who's not around anymore. Um, which was like, to me, kind of blew my mind in the sense that like, it, it's just, it takes a lot to get down there to, yeah. to do that. And so to have like a, even, you know, a, a cover band, a trivia band, whatever you want to call it, fills, fills a substantial gap for people that might be into certain types of music, but yeah. those acts can't, you know, get the juice to get down there and play. You mm. know? Well, growing up in New Zealand, buying records, um, it, I couldn't get Misfits records in New Zealand. It took me a long time to get hold of it, and I eventually had to end up getting secondhand ones. To, to buy an import back in the 80s, mid to late 80s, I was paying $50, $60 New Zealand back then oh my for a brand-new record, which was a lot of money. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, But I was introduced to the Misfits by a guy at school, um, and he had all the original Misfits, including um, all the original pressings, and I found out years later that he gave them all away because he, he lost interest or something like that. And he gave them all away to some neighbor of his who wasn't even into them. And I would just went, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I would have cherished those. Um, yeah. And um, But it, it was really hard to get it. And to hear live music, big bands, um, as metal, punk, whatever like that, you know, yeah, you'd get some of the, the, the kind of more common bands. But, um, yeah, very difficult. Um, and, um, 
it's just a, a, a money thing or a promotional thing. And, it, and it's starting to get really difficult again to get people down here without bands piggybacking on the back of each other, right. um, doing, right. doing tours. And that's what we're getting. And there's no real good festivals here in, in Australia now. Um, there really isn't. And um, now with this whole COVID thing and all of that, and, and Live Nation have, uh, are completely killing promotion for mid to low range people with all their new restrictions. I don't know if you've heard about that, um, but it's it's going to kill it here. It's it's really it, it really is. A, my heart, first of all, my heart goes out to you and you know your people about this sort of thing. <laughs> Steve's yes, Steve. We're still talking. Steve, we're talking about when Glenn and uh, uh, when when the um, original lineup of Danzig played uh, in New Zealand one time uh, with a Misfits cover band. Uh, ask. I, I wonder if Glenn even remembers that story. <laughs> I hope he does. Yeah. Um, Freaking, it's it's a cool story. And seriously, my heart goes out to you guys. And like. That like that must be so frustrating, and yeah, it's the same thing in like the film industry right now. The same yeah. problem with like, you know, um, you know, it's like it's like p budgets for like lower, lower range films are like they're they jacked up by like a million bucks because of like you have to be COVID safe, and and that's just like you know, imagine if you're that's like a set and you have like you know whatever like 20, 25 people, it's like with a venue and you want to have like, you know, you have to sell out the venue with hundreds of people and yada, yada, yada. It just, it just adds to so much. And I can't even imagine in addition to the logistics of getting down to Australia and, and New Zealand with the, between mm. the price of, of airplane tickets, guarantees, gas to drive from, what is it? There's like four big markets down there, right? Yeah, pretty much Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and South Australia mainly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, usually that's what you see. You see like when a big band is doing some uh the, the the Australian like it's usually four dates. But what people don't realize, it's not that people don't realize it, but like what's kind of crazy is that like the driving is insane. Like you're driving yeah. it's yeah. A, they're long drives. Yeah, yeah. I mean it takes you to drive from say Melbourne to Brisbane, it takes you thirty hours. Wow. And that's between yeah, that's yeah. Like between those two out of the four dates. That's like between two dates. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's um yeah, it is gonna it's gonna get tough with, with all this live nation thing too. Uh, we're really hoping that we can get smaller venues or smaller promoters to be able to do stuff to Australia because um all a lot of big bands, maybe not the big ones, Rolling Stones will be probably okay and those type of big bands, but smaller right. to mid-range they're not going to come here because um unless they can get a promoter that's not live nation thing i'm not bagging live nation they do what they do but i think it sucks with the amount of extra with the amount of um fees that they're putting on now and they're now making artists pay all their their own insurance and they're, they're giving look and they're, all they're arts 20 percent pay cut yeah yeah but those guys are motherfuckers like yeah, like, I yeah. Get it. I get it, but like, like what, like you know, we need fucking art and culture in our lives. We need music, man. We need live music, and you know, we so do. Give, I don't know. Yeah, but um, um listen, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry, my ahead. my favorite favorite Misfits song. I, I've got too many. Probably, I'm one of these people that really struggles um, with that. Um, yeah. Earth AD is my favorite album of theirs. Um, Blood Feast, probably yes. Queen Wasp, maybe favorite song, but I still love Cough Cool. Um, Sam Hain, Human Pony Girl. Um, <laughs> it's slow it's, and erotic. It's, a, <laughs> it's just something about it. Um, and maybe Let the Day Begin. I mean, I mean, yeah, three is my favorite. I think November Coming Fire has always been my favorite. Danzig, first song I ever heard. Um, was Am I Demon? Um, and right. obviously being in New Zealand was very, very hard to even hear a lot of dancing stuff at the time. And I heard it on the university radio and it completely blew my mind. And it's, and I actually recorded the show that I heard and I recorded it's it back in 88 or something. I've got it on cassette tape still. That's cool. Man. And I think that cassette tape introduced me to at least 20 bands. 
um, and I'm in contact at the moment with the guys who, who hosted that show. They really want to hear it. Um, and so, yeah, isn't it bizarre some of the stuff that you record off the radio when you're a kid? Um, but otherwise, Lisa Fuge, I love, I love the whole album and um, too many, too many good Danzig songs for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask Pete. I don't, Pete, I don't know if you're still here. Pete was saying that because they were doing final, Glenn was doing Final Descent while he was doing Lucifuge, and that um, Death in Its Arms was originally a Lucifuge song that went on Final Descent, which kind of blew my mind. It's like the whole Mephisto Waltz sort of situation. Mm. Like, what? I've never heard this before. That's like so crazy to me. <laughs> um, but uh, listen, uh, uh, Pat Wolf, you're awesome, dude. Thank you so much for the information. Put me in touch with those guys. Put yeah, I will. That, that I will because I, I really want to hear a proper, sober, full story of that as well because it's it's momentous and I'm blown away by the fact that you you know you guys are even aware of it because um, you know it's you guys are all on the other side of the world, man. <laughs> And yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy, but it's the internet, man. You know? It is, it is. And I, I would be really interested to find out even if Danzig's ever done that before. You know, I, I think, yeah. I don't think he has, man. I, no. I, mean, I, I well, What do I know? But like, um, freaking, I think it's, I think it's a combination of just being like on the other side of the world, you know. Uh, and again, part of the hook of the story, as I understand it, I'm sure your friends will clarify and, and clear mm. it up. But just that, like, I guess they part of it was just that that there was they didn't have anything planned at that night, like because mm. they were or they were locked down in some way, shape, or form. They were in, uh, you know, being in Auckland or something. I don't know, and yep. um, and, and that that also contributed to them going to the place. Which, from those pictures, it's a small, not it's, just a stage. The place is small. It's the small. I mean, it's it's just a tiny little bar at the bottom of a hotel, but yeah. there's you'd be surprised at what bands have actually played there before. And there's been a few really? international bands who have played there. Like I'm talking really early on before their success. Um, I think the guy who owned the hotel had a lot of connections in the promotion business, so gotcha. I think he people would just pop in there and do it. But from what I understand. Um, yeah, it was it was Danzig's manager, I think, that initiated it, and he heard about it. Now, what's interesting is the Hate Breeders used to always do their show every Halloween. Now, that show, if I remember right, was September, mid-September, I think. So I need to talk to them and find out why they brought it ahead early, and I suspect it might have been because it was on the night of Danzig's show. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's obvious. That's probably the Occam's I would reason. say so. Yeah, I would say so. But um, – but uh, yeah, I'd forgotten all about that story until I just saw your show, and and, and I just thought I'd love to share that with anyone yeah. because uh, hey. it's just so unique. Yeah, it is, it is. And thank you for seriously, thank you for commenting. I'm gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna wrap things up. Sweet, bro. Awesome. Two hours. Awesome, and um, love your show, man. And um, and thank keep you. it real. I I try my best. I try my yeah. best. So. Awesome. All right, man. Pat Wolf, thank you so much. Yep. I'm removing you from the from the thing. But a boom, Pat's out. This was a lot. This was a lot of fun, you guys, tonight. I had had a really great time. Let me just see if I whoa. Amanda says that Doyle is going back to Australia next year, I guess. Wow. A lot of bands will tie in Japan after Australia and New Zealand. Yes, that's yes. Yes, I've heard that as well. I mean, Steve, I asked you, Steve, the, the, the link was there. If you want to come on, you're more than welcome to join me. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not here. Here, here's the link, Steve. Steve, I'm putting the link in the thing. There you go. And say hello. I'm waiting. I want to hear Steve Zing's favorite Sam Hain, Misfits, and Danzig songs. Yes! Yes! Steve Zing! All right, Steve, whenever you're ready, I'm going to um, wait for this thing. He's coming. He's. Co I just sent you the link, Steve. Steve, I'm going to... Hold on. 
Uh, how can I send this to you, Steve? I would text it to you, but I don't. Hold on. One second, Steve. It was in the comment box, but you must have missed it here. I'm going to uh, send this to you via Facebook Messenger. Oh, this is what a treat. What a treat. He's probably going to make fun of my singing. All right, there it is. Steve, I just sent it via Facebook Messenger. Do, 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 do. Oh, shit. Oh, there he is. What's up? Yo, hiding in the shadows. How you doing? I'm, I, I just got to Nashville this afternoon and I'm sitting here watching Shark Tank. Ah, that, okay. Okay. Yeah, man. You do a lot of flying. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, welcome to the show. Hold on, let me turn down Shark Tank. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. What are we talking about? All right, well, We're first... Favorite songs? Yeah, let's do favorite songs um, first. What are your favorite... Your favorite... Um, I'll, I'll let you... Some of your favorite Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig songs. Well, Misfit songs, I mean... Hold on, let me turn this damn TV off. Yeah. Um, Misfit songs, anything from Static Age. You know, static Age sessions, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, can't, you can't go wrong with those. No, uh, definitely not. You know, Come on, uh, Steve, you got to be a little bit more specific. I, we love it all. That's the, you know, that's the thing. I didn't, when I did my, I did 13, 13, 13, but you got to, it's got to be like, it's got to be like, uh, I'm going to limit you. I want you to pick four songs from Misfits, four songs from Sam Hain, and four songs from Danzig. Uh, some Kind of Love, Some Kind of Hate, Bullet, uh, 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 TV Casualty. Um, uh, oh, man, it's hard because, you know. Um, Got to be four. I guess I'm trying to think what I want to – well, there's the original Teenagers from Mars. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you prefer that? You prefer the original Teenagers from Mars to the horror business one? I do because that's how I remember them practicing it. Oh, so you remember them practicing it really slow. Yeah. I just like it. I like it fast. And I like all the whatever. I don't know what they're doing on there. The, you know, like the the weird in the background. Well, the screams. The, yeah. 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 yeah that, that's, that, that's like it for me. Um, okay. Give me, uh, give me four Sam Hain songs. Uh, 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 Black Dream. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, I guess, um, To Walk the Night. Oh, love To Walk the Night so much. Uh, Were you November doing the fire? Sorry, say that again. November coming fire and uh, all yeah. murder all got so fun. Were you um were you singing or did you were you involved with that song in any way, shape, or form before uh you had departed the band at that time? Uh, uh I th I think what it was the start of um uh not to walk the night um I think Human Pony Girl and I think. The other one was, well, Am I Demon, uh, that one, you know, the original one. Wait, uh, what? Uh, whoa, 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 wait. You're telling me that Am I Demon was around, that there's a Sam Hain Am I Demon, and it was around pre-November Fire? Yeah, I mean, it was the start of it. You know, there were, there were certain things. You know, Glenn had a lot of ideas. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. I just had dinner with him last Wednesday. Yeah, how's he doing? He's doing fucking great. Good. I'm glad to hear that. He's great. I'm glad to hear that. Is the the second movie's getting wrapped up, right? It's done. Yes. It's done. Yes. Yeah. So. That's awesome. I'm that is the thing I'm most excited for and I really truly hope 
that he, no matter what anybody thinks of them or whatever the case may be, I hope he always makes movies. I will <laughs> always be there to see a Danzig film. This one, you know, this one's going to be really cool. It's got uh, Fred Armisen in it. And, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's cool. That's cool. It's cool. Um, wait, let me, hold on. Go, going back to a second, you're, you're kind of blowing my mind. So Am I Demon, am, there's like a, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to imagine, the thing that we've been talking about a lot on the show, which maybe actually you're the perfect guy to, to ask about this, you know, we're tr we're trying to like discuss the the Sam Hainness of like the Earth AD songs, like half of the Earth AD songs, and like what that might have sounded like, what they might have sounded like as original Sam Hain songs. Would they have been slower? Would they have been the same speed? Um, I th I think they would have been a little slower. I think, uh, you know, but but that but Sam Hain was supposed to be like that because it was dirgy it was. It, it, you know, it, it wasn't supposed to be the Misfits part two. Right. You know, and, and, and thank God for that. I mean, let the Misfits be the Misfits. Uh, why, you know, yeah, it didn't need to be a number two. And that's why there's a Danzig legacy, right? Misfits yes. and Danzig, because all three are basically all different. So, and you know, here's the other thing that I find fascinating about you guys. And like it, what, what truly blows me away about a band like Sam Hain is that it's like that this band, the way that it sounds and like what you guys were doing, like, uh, like amongst the other bands and the way that they sounded, like you guys are playing with hard, you guys aren't playing with death rock and goth bands. You guys are playing with like hardcore bands and yeah, it's, how does that work? Like, it's so crazy. Uh, it, it, it was, it was. You know, I did at the beginning. I didn't really understand what Sam Hain was going to be about, right? But Glenn right. knew he wanted he want, he didn't want a Misfits Part Two. Otherwise, we would have just went out as the Misfits, you know. Um, and I think there were a lot of people that didn't understand it at first. They eventually got it, but they didn't understand it at first, uh, and that's okay, right? Because it's better to be the leader than the follower. And I think I. I think we started some, you know, cool things in music where uh, the sound uh, of Sam Hain was very different than a lot of other bands. And I, you know, that that's cool. Why not? Again, why, you know, it's like, it's, it's like even for me, like with my black 29 people, like that doesn't sound like Danzig. Why the fuck would I want it to sound like Danzig? Yeah, Danzig already exists. What, why would I want it to sound like that? Come on. It's stupid. Uh, you know, everybody's what's got going to on with that stuff, by the way. What's what's the latest? So uh, the, the, the great thing is we inked a deal with Cleopatra Records. And um, right now. Um, so here's something nobody knows about. So oh, exclusive. Uh, for the uh, European release of Black 29, the label asked uh, me if I would be interested in doing a a kind of like a duet thing with uh, the singer from the 69 eyes. Oh, uh, Yerky. And uh, so um, it, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I can tell you there's a few people. Um, there's uh, two other members of Danzig that are playing on it. <laughs> nice. Um, oh, I wonder, hmm, I wonder who those two are. <laughs> and, um, uh, I should say current members. Um, and uh, so right now, um, uh, it, those, that stuff's being worked on. I got the drum tracks already, the guitar tracks Tommy's working on. And uh, vocals are done on my side. I sent them to uh, uh, Yerky last week, and he's working on his. And it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to tell you the song. It's a song from the 70s, but it was like, one of my all time favorite songs, like when I was a kid and it's, it's pretty cool. Is it, um, are you, are you faithful to the song or is it more like, uh, heavy what you guys are doing? Uh, it made, it made it heavy. You know, That's why not? Cool. Why not? As a matter of fact, you know, I, I, there's a, there's a strong contingent out there amongst, amongst us, you know, uh, nerds who really love, the uh the single that you put out this just the steve zing 
you know, um, uh, friggin' what's it called? Uh, Runaway single. Oh my god, that you know, that was not, I, I recorded that in 1983 or 84. But it's super like, I mean, with the chimes or whatever you're doing on there, it's super gothy. I like try to imagine what a full, I try to imagine what a, like a full album of that stuff, like whatever else, like I try to imagine like both, whether you're doing covers or like original Steve Zing songs or whatever the hell you would be making in that vein, like that, I kind of wish we had that album. You know, uh, and we never got it. That that was that was that was a time, you know, and everything yeah. has a time and place. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I gotta tell you, I'm like I'm really happy with the new black twenty nine stuff. And so the label has everything and, and actually right. now all I need is artwork and uh so I'm, I I gotta get some some cool people out there to submit some art. Cleopatra so. kinda knows where it's at. And if you're looking, listen, if you're looking for people, um I, if you want to, if you want me to, I will rec make a recommendation for two really cool people. And if you like what they have and I'll tell you what, to, why don't you me. call me tomorrow? Okay. I will absolutely do that. Cause I think I, if you really are looking for art, I know people that are really fucking some really cool people that would friggin' cool. Yeah. Job. Call me tomorrow. I will. But I yeah. So, um, so now let's see um, what so what other did, songs are we what other songs are we talking about? I want to hear four four Danzig songs now. All right, um, I would have to say Godless. Yes. Um, Soul on fire. Okay. Um, uh, it's hard because they're, they're you know there's a lot of cool songs. Uh, Pain is like an animal. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's one that that's something I haven't heard in a long time. Uh, and um, um, uh, uh, oh God, man, there's so many. There really are a lot of songs. Um, brand new God. Okay. What is what's the funnest for you to play play on like what is one and i guess there's two quite there's two that that splits into two roads because it's like there might be a song that might be more complicated and you got to think about it but you like the way it sounds or, and then there's the song that might be more fun because you you don't have to think about as much like because it's an easier song to play what 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 are some songs like that well godless is fun to play and and uh uh you know am i demon and I don't know. They're, you know, each one takes on form. It, it, it's kind of weird to be to be playing those songs, right? Um, and and being on stage with Tommy and Johnny and Glenn, mm -hmm. and, and I think the camaraderie of, f with us works really well. And there, you know, you talk about, you know, I, I heard you were talking about the, the live stuff before. Um, yeah, you know, look, they they had a, they had an incredible lineup back then. Uh, it. It um, I, if it wasn't for John, it wouldn't have held together. You know, John was a John's a great guitar player. Um, oh, John Christ, yeah, dude. Yeah. You know, and, but and and then people try to compare Tommy, but Tommy Tommy's not John, and I don't think Tommy tries to be like John. That's that that would Tommy's got his own sound. He's got his own thing. You know, and you 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 can't really compare. Agree. But when when it comes down to it, you know, we're all we're all friends, so I think it works. Um, it's much easier. There was a lot of riff riffs in the band back then, and that doesn't make for good storytelling for sure. So, right. um, uh, but yeah, I mean, look, did, I, I I could think of all the different lineups and and stuff and and there everybody's got good there's there's good songs on it on on all those albums you know how can there not be i mean even even danzig five you know that's a that's an interesting you know i've several times i've really tried to sit with danzig five and i just I mean, I like that. What's the first one? Is Seventh House? I think the yeah. Seventh House is the first one. Well, I'm getting a question from Alberto, who was on uh, on the He wants to know: Ask Steve, will will we get an Elvis track at Psycho Fest 2021? 
and surprises. That's what Alberto asks. Right Alberto, now. I hope we get to, I hope we get the psycho fest. <laughs> you know, I hope for you guys too. Uh, well, I, I, hey, look, not for just us, but for the, but for entertainment in general in the world. You know, um, I'm, man, you know, it's, I was flying today, you know, and all the, I was talking to a flight attendant and, and she came up to me. I had gotten bumped up to, to first class. And so she, she actually, she stopped and she said, you're a musician. I'm like, yeah. So we were just chatting and she's like, well, it, it, I know things, you know, we're American and things are going to come back and, you know, we're blah, blah, blah. And then she looks at me and, and it was really weird. She goes, it is going to come back. Right. Because like people are scared. I mean, people don't know what to think anymore because we've become so politicized that you don't know what the truth is and what isn't the truth. And whether and whether you're left or you're right, it doesn't matter, right? Because there are agendas on both sides, but the but the but to take out the the part of us being um the Americans or, or, or people of the world, they forgot about us. All right. They, they forgot about the people and it's all about the agenda and the agenda does not include me, you or anybody else. It's all personal and, and corporate agendas. And again, is there a virus? Yeah. As to what extent? I don't know. I Yes. I know a lot of people that have gotten it. My own doctor died from it. So yeah, there's a virus, but I, again, at this point, you don't know what to believe and who to believe, and it's it's a shit show for sure. You know what's interesting? I was talking with um, I was talking about this with Loki. We have I have another podcast, which by the way, you should come on that podcast it's called Pizza Punk. I just had Andy Chernoff from the Dictators. That was a friggin' awesome conversation. We were talking, Loki and I were talking about the future of live music and how that's what that's gonna look like and how that works and like how can a band I mean, obviously not a band like Danzig, like a band like at a much, much, much lower level that, you know, maybe is doing like super, like going the super indie route. Like, is there a way for, for, for that kind of band to tour? You, you know, like? again, you know, everybody's is waiting for this magic um, um, potion that they're going to come out with this vaccine. You know, maybe that'll work. I don't know. I would never take it because I don't even take the regular flu shot because I don't believe in that shit as far as putting stuff in your body you don't even know what the hell's going in you you know so i'm very leery of that stuff and especially a vaccine that they're going to make in a matter of months um i'm not sure that's the solution to be honest with you well it, but you know is the solution masks i don't know i mean you you can't function with a mask on it doesn't work you know um are people going to get sick yeah, but at some point you got to have herd immunity. I mean, the Spanish flu disappeared within 12 months. People had herd immunity. It went away. So so you have to think now, you know, is this something more? Because they keep referring to it like the Spanish flu. Is it something more that we don't know about that they're not telling us? Who knows? I don't know. I don't. Nobody knows. And if they do know, they're not telling us. So... Um, but well, the thing that's interesting about live live venues in particular, the thing that I'm wondering is like, what kind of liability is there? Liability? What kind of liability liabilities does a live venue or the band itself, the band have liability? Like how? Like where? Like there's so much red tape. Like, well, of like just just, just in general, when we go on tour, right? Yeah, we have to have insurance as a band per right. show. Right. right. Somebody right. gets hurt that has nothing to do with the band. Who do they right. sue? They start, right. they sue the venue, they sue the band. Um, so there's all kinds of crap that goes. People think you just go on tour and they you book a show and that's it. There's a lot more to it than that. And that's why ticket prices are the way they are, because the expense of touring is 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 astronomical. You know, you yeah. got things like tour buses. So you go, you get tour bus. Well, a tour bus is eight hundred to a thousand dollars a day. Then you have fuel. Then you have the driver, 
right? The fuel is insane. Well, the fuel that and and there's insane. you know there's tolls, there's taxes, and yeah. there's the driver, and the driver makes a good amount of money as he should because he's driving the band. To keep right? everybody safe. Right, right. exactly. So there's there's a lot of different things involved that a lot of people don't understand, and there's a lot of hands in the pot, right? Right. So I'm the only you got management, business managers, um, uh, uh, legal. So there's all kinds of people that get the money before you do, and but that's just part of the business. That doesn't matter. With with this whole thing, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And I'm hoping that after the election, um, that it starts going away or becoming, you know, it's going to be a shit show for a while. That's for sure. But um, whoever the well, time will tell, that's for certain. I mean, we are literally on the cusp. I I told you privately my thoughts about civil war and whatnot. I well, think like I don't we're know we're there. Gonna happen. Yeah, we're <laughs> there. It's <a> scary. Um, <laughs> and. But there's too many outside influences outside this country, and that's the problem. You know, that's the problem. And I don't know. Look, sometimes you just have to put your head down and 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 go forward and and not try to think too much because you got to understand something, Jeff. This shit has been going on forever, right? It's just really to the forefront now because the guy in charge tells a really good story right now. He's really good at it. And I don't care. I, I have no, I don't care if you're left or right. It doesn't bother me. It's, it is what it is. It's politics and, and politics are, are dirty. You know, it's no different than the mafia. All right. So, uh, but it doesn't well, matter. I'll tell you two things, two things. Thing number one, I will say this, the thing that the biggest notion that I have taken away from this particular election as opposed to previous elections is the one thing that does give me fatigue is like that both the, the two party system is a status quo where like all the problems that you know some of the problems that are blamed on the current current administration have existed before the current administration and will probably exist after the current administration and it's partially because of the system that's These number are one. the problems that have always been here and will always be here. And it doesn't matter who's in charge because again, there it, it's not, it doesn't have to do with me or you. It has to do with agendas and agendas are, are, it's, it are financial. They're, they're all financial agendas. They're not, it has nothing to do with anything but financial agendas. And, if we can all stop saying the left is right and the and the right is wrong and, and, and vice versa, and we can figure out that hey, they failed every single person in this country. All right. Hell, look at it like this. Say you're an average person, right, with an average moderate income of let's call it fifty or sixty thousand dollars, and you're you come out of college, right, with student debt, and maybe you're living in an apartment by yourself or with a roommate, and you have uh, rent, you have cell phone, you have um, your your student loans, and maybe a car payment, and now you lost your job, all right? And if they're mm -hmm. private loans, you still owe money; they don't care. They're not, that's not being furloughed, those payments. So now you get your $1,200 from the government. And after you spend your $1,200 on a said rent or car payment and, or, you know, uh, student loans and maybe food or maybe utilities, uh, then what? Okay. So you're getting unemployment, but then when that extra ran out, there was no rush and there's still no rush to get anybody else anything different. So what is that saying? You know, you know, people talk about they don't want socialism. Well, what is socialism? It's exactly what we're in right now. Police are socialism. Schools are socialism. Relying on the government for help <laughs> is socialism. So tell me, tell me we're not a socialist country, right? 
Tell me. I, I mean, uh, I, suddenly I, there's a socialist boogeyman out there out, out of nowhere. Like all of a sudden it's just like, oh, the socialism is going to get just like all this shit is socialist. Well, of course it is. And it's all smoke and mirrors. And again, I'm not I'm not a political person. I don't really care. What I care about is is trying to is trying to find out somewhat of the truth of what the hell is going on and what is real and what isn't. And I don't I don't really know if we'll, we'll really find out. Uh, anytime soon, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, I, in the, this flight attendant today where I said, well, it's kind of reminiscent of 9-11. It's like, no, this is worse. It's like, this is definitely worse. Um, she, all her friends, the co-workers, you know, that were there 20 years, 25 years, they were all just let go. And, you know, a lot so, of people losing their jobs. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. So, you know, there's, it's, uh, it's a rough one, but again, what don't we know if, if they, if they say this is kind of like the Spanish flu, well, the Spanish flu in 12 months was done and over with if, if read up on it. Well, what's going on here? What, what, what is it that we don't know about this? I don't know, but, but we have, we still, it still hasn't been a year yet at least a year on the official calendar. So we'll come. Well, what are we, eight months? We're eight now? months. We'll see. Nine months, 10 months, um, or 10 months. Know, I just hope that this election thing is, gets over fast and whoever's going to be the in charge is in charge. And we move on. And, and without know. going down that rabbit hole, I, that's what I'm most afraid of because well, I don't think that's going to be the case. Well, no, without going down that rabbit hole. Of course not. Of course not. I, I get um, it. But but to, my other point was, I hope, and we haven't seen it yet, but I hope that there's a revolution of punk rock in the sense of like people picking well, up instruments. I, and I, I, I got to tell you something. Um, you know, I'm, I, I co-produced the new uh, Chromags album. And, we, you know, we... Mazel tov, by the way. I've been seeing those progress uh, updates and stuff. How How's that been? What's that been like? Well, it's been amazing and wait till you hear this and i i don't want to release information yet but it's pretty cool and it's um what he wrote and stuff is is so spot on for what's going on uh but it and there's just by coincidence you, you'll see i can't i don't want to release it no, no, i understand i respect but that but it's tell uh me, tell me this tell me this as uh because you're you're a co-producer so like what is that like? How, how does that all work? You come, they, you have a new, you have a studio, Trick or Treat Studios, right? That's yes. what it's called. So you have a studio, they come in and, and you, uh, you're engineering the session, but you're also like, do, what do you like help with, like, say, like trying to find like the right kind of sound or like what well, is it's the, the sound? It's, it's, it's kind of guiding him like vocally and, and things and, and, um, just, you know, trying to figure out heads and, heads or tails on what's going on and between myself and this other guy arthur rizik uh who uh produced power trip and bands like that um we've both been working on it and uh it's uh it's really good it's it's been a blast you know harley's a great friend and uh it's it's really i'm really uh honored to be part of what he's coming out with that's really cool and you get to, and it's like and it's like you get to also, I mean, and, and the other thing that's interesting, too, is that there's like so many places to go. Like I saw you, you had a video one day, you were talking about like all the different, you have all these crazy plugins that you can do. Like you have all these like little like, like amp emulators that like, I, I'm, I'm heavily invested in, in studio gear and, and it's my, uh, it's my passion uh, yeah. uh, it's, I, since I was a little kid, but uh, it's been, uh, you know. It's been quite an investment, and moving to this new house has been great. You know, uh, building out my control room and stuff, and so yeah, it's you and you bought a you. I saw you bought a giant. You bought the giant home improvement uh, skeleton. Home Depot. Well, they <laughs> sold. They're sold out around the country, so I convinced the store manager to sell me the yeah. floor model at forty percent off. So nice. Never. Nice. Paid I will I won't say what that's so cool though. I, and it's just like it's like a giant skeleton. It's, it's like 12. all you need, you need the pumpkins. You just need the pumpkins uh -huh. from the stage. 
on, on yeah. either side of the of the scout, just call Glenn, be like Glenn, let me get those pumpkins. <laughs> like my yeah. pumpkins. But uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna keep it up all year round, although Lana you should. Lana thinks otherwise, but I'm gonna put a Santa hat on it for Christmas. And yes, I think uh it's well, a pain in the ass to take down anyway, right? Yeah, it's you need ladders and stuff. Yeah, screw uh, that. Ladders. Just leave it up. Lana yeah. doesn't mind. What's that? Lana's no, cool with it. She's like, oh, we got we'll put it in the backyard. I'm like, I'm not moving this damn thing. A it's heavy and it and it took three people to put together. Did Otis does Otis like bark at it? <laughs> Otis. <laughs> My boy. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you got to come by the house. I want it. Yeah, man. I want to see it. Um, video. One, last, one last question. Um, you, you were mentioning your, your love for studio gear started when you were little. Did that come from George Germain? Did he? No, like... actually, it, it, it's, it started actually before George. Although George really, um, he would teach me about things music wise, studio. Yeah. Um, you know, George was an old beatnik guy that just knew a little bit about everything, you know. So, um, you know, he was good at he was good at certain things. I learned a lot. Like, you know, you were talking about that runaway thing. So that yeah. runaway song, you know what that was? That was um I was gonna go to recording school and I was really? telling the engineer. Bob Aleka, who owned the Real Platinum Studios in Lodi, where we recorded right. Morning Noise and, and of course, uh, Sam Hain and Undead shit. Um, I was telling him, and he's like, I'll tell you what. He's like, the best way to learn recording is to actually do it hands-on. He goes, in those schools, you get some hands-on, but you're with so many people. He's like, I'll tell you what. I'll sell you studio time at a reduced discount. And you come in and you do something and you will be hands-on from soup to nuts. And that's wow. why I did Runaway. It was to really learn how to record. And that, so that's where you got, so that's how you learned how to like record. Well, I, like hands-on on the board and EQ right. and, and walk me through things. That's yeah. why that song was done. And wow. I never, I had never sang before. So I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I loved that song as a kid. I'm like, all right, let's try that. And that's why we did that song. It's great. Yeah. And great. Yeah. And I know, listen, I know, uh, you know, you say, oh, you've never sung before, but you actually have a, you have a pretty good voice. And, you know, it kills me that you never, you should have been, I'm just saying you should utilize it. You should have utilized it more in the past. Let's put it that way. Uh, that's what I'm going to say about that. Wait till you hear the new Black 29 album. Okay, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very I, I, excited. I, you know what? I am too. Not because it's my stuff, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I actually like it. You know, when I can listen over to it over and over, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know? You and Dano make a great little team of like, you know, just like the way that you guys, you guys are multi-instrumentalists. You guys know what you're doing. You got the engineering stuff. It's like, it, it makes so much sense. Well, yeah. it, it, it works because I come from a simplistic background of, you know, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, get the fuck out. And mm -hmm. he comes from a very um, prog type background. Yeah. And, you know, so he takes my simplistic ideas and puts a different spin on them and it works because we're not we're not there recording um you know a lot of times in the past you have different members and they're all listening for their parts but they're not listening for the song right in this mm -hmm. in this case both him and i are listening for what's best for the song and not what's best for my vocals drums his guitar his bass but what's best for the song so when you only have two hands in the pot or I should say four hands in the pot rather than eight or 10. It's, it's very different. You get to compliment you and you complement each other with each your, you with your song structure and him with like the prog stuff. You guys I, can compliment each other. I think way. so. And it's nowhere near prog, but I'm saying, you know what I mean? His, yeah, his influence of that, the way he comes up with guitar parts to my ideas, you know, right. I know what, you know, he'll all often say, like he goes, you know, you know what it sounds like in your head before it's even recorded. And I do, cause I kind of, you know, when I'm thinking about it, I, I know what it is, but, and, but he helps, you know, 
he helps me get there. And without him, I would, I'd be lost to be honest with you. So. One, one last question. One last question. Um, the, we were talking about this the other day. I had, I did not know this. This blew my mind. The Sam Haim, uh, initium cover. Mm-hmm. It's, that's real horse blood. Yeah. Okay. What the, like, what the fuck? How does that, how does that go down? What you're in Glenn's basement. Glenn goes, guys, we're going to put up, we're going to cover ourselves in horse blood. This is pre the blood shows, right? You haven't done the blood shows yet. Right. So, so what? It was a very messy day. I could tell you that. <laughs> but like, what does he just, does he, he took the photo himself, right? So uh, he set the, he set the, the camera up and my friend, Joe Olivetti, um, who uh, actually roadied for Sam Hain and, and drove for us around the country um, and sold merchandise and basically did everything. Uh, actually, he was one of the singers of Morning Noise, too. Um, he uh, he snapped the photo after Glenn set the shot up. But, uh, yeah, so. Wow. Yeah. And, Good but, times. I mean, but you're just like, but but I don't understand. Glenn comes up to me, he's like, he's like, Steve eerie put put this horse blood on you and you're just like all right let's do it it was uh, like i said it was a very messy day it was you know there was a newspaper all over glenn's house leading right. up to the shower which we all had to take right after because it was all right over the place and then his wow. father made his pasta so it was good that's the best ending to that situation i've ever heard so the greatest album cover ever like it's just such a great album cover it's just like you guys are just like standing I, there i very blood. rarely think about it to be honest with you it's, it's kind of one of those things that i guess i take for granted in my mind i mean it's i remember it like it was yesterday taking the photo um how many did you take I, it was like three or four yeah yeah there was three mm-hmm. or four good shots i think maybe we took a half a dozen maybe they, some were blurry or whatever but um yeah, yeah where, where did Glenn get the horse blood from? <laughs> uh, you go up to a slaughterhouse in New York State, right? Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. so much less exciting than what I thought in my mind, but that makes sense. Yeah, you just go to a slaughterhouse. Well, hey, Glenn, you, you, you do know Glenn loves animals and would never hurt an animal. Of course, no, of course, I do know that. That it's not his thing. Yeah, I he likes animals more than he likes people. That's for sure. Right. So, right. Um, so that answers. But, that um, yeah. So. That's that. Yeah. So I hope I answered Albert Alberto, was it? Yes, you did. I, you answered one of his, I don't know. There was a, a whole slew of questions. I didn't want to interrupt the flow of conversation. So I did not I did Sorry, not forgot all you. Let me, hold on, let me just let, let me just see if there's anything really good that we missed. I mean, people talk about Chrome Mags, but everybody's happy. Uh uh asking about uh Elvis track. Uh, and surprises asking about um, respect to Steve, yada yada yada. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty much. It. Oh, Rocky is on fire. I think Rocky is who's Rocky in, in the Chromax? Is that the guitar player? Rocky is George, he? yeah. Oh, Rocky George. So, okay, so Rocky George, I used to see him with Fishbone, yeah, of course. And oh, my title, Fuck, dude, he is some. Uh, I, I man, he. He was a secret weapon in Fishbone and just set the friggin' stage on fire. Phenomenal Rocky's guy. A phenomenal player. You know. I didn't know he was back in the band. That's awesome. Well, That's he's really been, cool. he's been in Chromax for quite a while now. Huh. Uh, past few years. Yeah. That would make sense because Fishbone, Fishbone like is basically the original lineup and Rocky George exited. And they right. That makes sense. Yeah. So. Well, Steve, this was a wonderful. This is a wonderful wonderful all the way from uh, nashville tennessee all the way from nashville listen i'm gonna i'm gonna make one last statement yeah. i am hoping i'm hoping i don't know if this is gonna happen but i think it will if 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 i have a little gas in the tank what i'm hoping is i've been putting this out there for bands i've been trying to get bands i want them to cover sam Hain songs like earth ad songs or earth ad songs like sam Hain songs and if I can get that to happen, you need to be the, you need to listen to these songs and judge it and yeah, like decide what the fucking, what's the shit. If of I can course. put this contest together, will you be the judge of the contest? Sure. Fuck yeah, Steve. Listen, have a safe trip. Call Say me. Hello to Lana. 
and, and give Otis a, a little a little pat on the head, and I will put you in. I, I'll we'll talk. I'll I'll, I'll text you. Okay. That's good, my friend. Hey, thank, thank you for making guys. this phenomenal episode, dude. Woo. Take care. And there you have it, Steve, motherfucking zing, salt of the earth, truly one of the nicest guys I've ever had the pleasure of knowing, um, casually knowing. Uh, Steve is a great guy, truly, truly a great guy. Really, really, really fucking awesome to all the fucking music fans out there. Um, and, you know, I mean, dude is fucking ginormous fucking, like, lover of the Misfits and, you know, all those bands himself, as he said, you know. Um, so this has been a great episode. I was not expecting that. That was what a great way to uh, finish out the episode. And uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll see about a contest. Maybe we'll we'll we'll, get, we'll try and get this cooking. Who knows? Uh, that would be a lot of fun. And um, yeah. So freaking yeah. Al as Alberto says, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Steve. Final thought. I think the Hate Breeders was the one song they played with Glenn. That's funny. Well, we're going to hear all about that story. Thanks to Pat Wolf for coming on. Thanks for Alberto and, and Pete and Greg, all you guys for coming on, making this a very special audience participation episode, you know? Um, definitely we'll try and do more of that stuff in the future. Okay, I am exhausted. Um, peace and hair grease.